Yo, what is going down, y'all? Welcome in the most underrated podcast you already know. Broadcasting from most underrated studios. I am your man, Thomas the Franchise. The homie Dow Palantonio chilling across from me. Bruh. Yes. Feeling good. Yeah. Sorry we're late, fellas. Yeah. Ladies, gentlemen. We had a little shock of a drop. Shock drop went on in the sneakers app. You missed out. The Bread 11s just dropped. We in here. Those do not come out till December. And uh, shout out to the homie Goldeneye. Shout out to the homie Goldeneye putting us up on game. Always, always. And uh, yeah, we got the shock drop. We did, we did. Well, you did. I don't know. I don't. Uh, you guys are still pending? I'm still in line. Uh, let me see. I'm getting text people waiting for you to go live. Okay. Danny B said, let's get it cracking, Jalal. <laughs> <laughs> Jalal's getting blamed. That's tight. I, I like the demand, though. Conley just sends me that. No inside info, no heads up early. No, just just, just that. He just sent you a got him? Yeah. <laughs> just let me know that he got him. Thanks, Conley. Give you a, uh, that's cool. I can't see the chat, by the way, either. Uh, I don't even know if I got the shoe yet. I'm still I'm still checking. Let me turn this down a little bit. Still studio. Yeah. <laughs> You, you like, like that? that? That's, That's my remix for this, man. man. We, we take keys. We, we take ownership of our new studio tomorrow, dog. How, How geeked are you? Stu, stu, studio. How geeked are both of you guys? I'm, I'm super geeked. I'm I'm yeah. s- especially because you showed me this video this morning, like a super motivational video. Oh, what does it say? Oh, it hit me with a... It just, it just dropped. I don't know what you're looking at. <laughs> oh, it hit me with like a just dropped refresh image. Damn, Damn, dude, it still shows on pending, bro. Does it? Man, now I'm getting stressed out. The only reason I, I know I got it was because I got that Nike, or oh, the, the Wells Fargo notification <laughs> for my, uh, for my uh, Apple Pay. Let me see the chat real quick. Is there an echo? Is that, do you have that up with your law by chance? Let's see there's an echo. Hold up, I can't see the chat. Um, there we go. Got it. Now I can see the chat. Are any of you guys playing it? Playing the stream? Look at Echo, guys. No, Echo for sure. Playing the stream. How would we be playing the stream? Yeah, I don't even have YouTube on. Uh. Yeah, just turn your audio off on the laptop. I don't hear it though, so. My my sh- uh because I'm through the mixing board. I can't. None of this is it work. None of this works during the show for me. Um, let me see. Yes, there is. Damn it. I got what? you. I got you. You get, you found it? Yep. Yes. Thank got you. Him. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, man. Thanks. Shout out to my lady who was texting me. People in the chat. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Jalal, thanks for getting that fixed, man. Welcome <laughs> in, guys. Shout out. Congratulations to Dallas. Most underrated podcast. You already know. Yeah. Bread 11 drop threw me off a little bit. I'm still waiting. Oh, no. What was that? Oh, What's it's me. It's me. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys are. <laughs> I'm about Rookie to do move. that video at Thanksgiving right now at this table. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what now? Yeah, you got your Stone Cold shirt on. You might as well. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Can we start the show already, please? Let's start it. Everybody's donating to the Echo issue. <laughs> <laughs> Donate. Yeah, echo please. support oh, fund. I'm, I'm, uh, hold on. Let me, get some, let me get some cymbal slaps. We're currently doing uh, the podcast with a string in a can, so. <laughs> No big deal. <laughs> Danny B, what's going on? T-Mobile's up in here. Jay Nasty, the Mad City Madman. Sold out. Renzo. There we go. Con Lee donating the Echo issue. Shout out to Con nice. Lee. $2. Appreciate you, bro. Thank you, Con Lee. Al Baroon as well. $2. Euro. Two euros. Two euros. Echo support fund. Give him Wait, one. If it's euros, that's got to be worth more than Canadian. Oh, yeah. That's Hell right. yeah. That's right. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, what up, boys? Got him, size twelve. Ramos, you got him in the size twelve, man. That's probably why I missed out. You probably got my pair, bro. Wow, probably got my pair. I went, I went half size up, man, because I saw, uh, I saw some of the quantity, the number of quantity between shoes, uh, with a little bit of help of uh, Goldeneye. So I was able to get the ten and a half because it had a lot more pairs than my true to size ten. So if anybody wants a ten and a half, I'll have them for you after the review. <laughs> It said it was nice. sold out in my size, and I went back, and the 10 was still there. I was what it shows, but yeah. Let's see. Tommy H., what's going on? What's up, bro? Pena, four ninety nine. Yo, Mike Pena, what's going on, dude? You got to hit Oh, yeah, phone. damn. Pena, damn. welcome to the live cast, dog. Welcome into the live. Oh, wow. Look at that. Sold out in your size. Didn't get them. Yeah. yeah. I'm out. But then I go, yeah, I go back 10, 11. There's no need for me to buy another size. Uh, oh, let's see. Pena. Hey, yo, buddy. 
<laughs> Ten dollars well, if Jalal can hit from the back. All right, there Whoa. we go. Hey, and while while he's trying uh, for that, Lorenzo uh, says, "Dal, uh, sell me your ten and a half, bro." Um, hey, after the review, I, I I definitely might be interested in doing that, bro. So I'll reach out to you. All right, hey, we got we got one, two, three, four. We got four, and then and then uh, Pena's got a shot on this. So this is outside of that, but we, we got. Do we got a Don this episode? Who wants to be the Don? That's what I'm saying. We got four shots. We need to get a new uh, a new Don. Shout out to the homie that was the Don last time. He uh, he matched the hundred dollar donation that I was able to hit. So this is for ten dollars from the corner, Jalal. Go ahead. Oh, oh, that's a pretty good shot from that far back. It's I'm far, getting, dude. I'm getting good, Pena. It's far. I like it. All right, let's there. uh let's catch up on these really quick. So we got one, two, three, four, four of them. All right, so you take we'll go we'll rotate. Go ahead, Dal. First one. Okay. This is to match the uh two dollar donation from Con Lee for the got Echo it. issue. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Ah oh. missed that one. Wow. It's That's be, fun. It's because I'm still shaking, man, because I got the shock drop. But we don't have a Don, though. Um, maybe we'll find a Don. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Let me. Uh, what is this one? Is to this one's to match Al Bruns 199, the Echo Support Fund. I got it. <laughs> ah, off the back. All right, uh, that's two down. Mike Payne, this match is five dollars. All right, this is definitely one we need. All right, here we go, Dallas. Oh, hey. finally, got Dal. Him, got him. All right. It's this yeah. symbol that's in the way. That's, that's what it is. It's a symbol in the way. All right, now we're going to uh, match Eric Castro's $5, and then I'll catch up on the uh, comments here. Let's see. Nothing. Nothing on that They told one. me to flick the wrist. That was the worst fucking advice I ever listened to, Pena. <laughs> you see how you I didn't even know if I hit the backboard. Sorry, I was cussing too early in the show. All right, it's so enough uh, with the shots. Let me focus here. Reel it, reel it back in. Um, we got a hell of a show for you guys today, man. Good show to end the weekend. We got a ton of uh, exciting games this week, so we're going to go over the heaters for you guys. Colin Kaepernick being offered a workout by the NFL. We want to touch on that. Little Rockets Clippers, little family beef going on there. Mm -hmm. Disney Plus coming out uh, on this day. We've got that for you. As always, we'll do some YouTube comments, sneakers and fashion, and uh, an interested underrated news. I see the headline here. But I don't know anything about it, so I'm excited for you to tell me about this. To give you, yeah, to give you some info. This kind of uh, came out around the time I got in the game, so I'm excited to uh, I'm excited to hear about that. Um, but yeah, starting off, we get our building, dude. We we're taking over possession of the keys on uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow morning at ten, and we're gonna get our space. So our hope, we get internet installed on Saturday. We get the keys tomorrow. We got the internet already set up, ready to go. We get that Saturday. Uh huh. And our hope is to be bringing you guys the show live from the new most underrated studios on Monday. And I don't know. We're kind of, there is no really in, in between space because <laughs> if we've already kind of given our notice here. So we tear this down. We're tearing this studio down. We got to tear down all this stuff that we've done here. So we can't do this studio in two spots. Mm -mm. You know what I mean? Like that's got to work. There is no, <laughs> there's no other option. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of weird, right? Oh, man, we're, we're going to be pulling some late-night sessions over there. Yeah, we're on a crunch here. All right, the, the Jordan 11s are per, uh, fully sold out. Are they? So is the, is the cast still echoing? Somebody tell me that. I No. I don't think so. Uh, Let me see. I just want to make sure. People are texting me, but I don't I was know. That's kind of smart to go for the 10 and a half. These people are delayed. Who it was, it's right? kind of an ugly size. Who's uh who got the ten and a half? Uh, Dallas did. I did. Are you going to resell? Um, yes, I'm probably going to resell it after the after the review that we do because that's what we needed it for. Um, and then I'll get my ten eventually. But it doesn't even give me the got him. It says purchased. That sucks. Why? The new app. It ah, says purchased. Dude. Where's my got it? Where's my got him? Oh, there's a draw for the bread elevens in the UK on sneakers. Al Bruin says. Oh, draw. Really? Yeah. Ugh. That sucks. No echo, 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 echo. <laughs> <laughs> fail beast. <laughs> Fire. Thank you, uh, guys. Fail beast. Welcome. Appreciate it. All right. people. The people text me must be uh, tuning in a little bit late. Um, okay. So I'm glad we got that figured out. Uh, CMAs last night. Yeah. Did you want... Let me, let me turn down Phil. I'm going to put on... Uh, I'm going to put on your new favorite guy. How Dude, did you not know about Luke Combs? I had no idea about Luke Combs. 
How? I'm not a big country guy. Okay. So um, that's probably you, why. I was very surprised. I didn't even know the CMAs were on. I was busy. I was editing the vlog. We yeah. went and filmed some footage yesterday. So I'm taking care of that. And you had a date night. And uh, yeah, went out to dinner with my lady. Sick. That was fun. Just just Olive Garden. We had a gift card. So oh, we nice. were like, hey, we're just going to go hit it up, burn through there. And you know I love Olive Garden because when yeah. you're there, you're family, guy. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I love that shit. I love, the, I love that's, that. That's the gayest thing I've heard all day. What but, you, wow. But I'm, I'm in here for it. I can't. Did All you right. get the never ending uh pasta? pasta? You cut you got it, dude. <laughs> yes. Never ending pasta bowl. Yes. Uh dude, and check this out, man. A couple things. Number one, there was a dude sitting there with his family. Okay. And uh I'm asking my girl. She thought it was a girl from the back. The guy had like Bruno Mars style hair, dude. Like a like a Robin Thick hipster haircut, like oh, that wow. long. But he was a a straight up black dude. Like Fully black guy, but I was like looking at his hair, and I was—it looked like a wig almost from the back. Like I was like, "There's no way that's his natural hair." It was like, like almost like a pompadour. Yeah, because it was shaved up on the bottom, so you could see how his hair really grew. But then on top, it was—it was just crazy. So sounds pretty awesome. Yeah, it was crazy. So this was the table next to us. There was nobody in this room. When we got in there. It was nice. My uh, my girl wanted to move tables so we can get a little bit nicer lighting. Sure. So we moved around, made a made a little fuss. Those people were sitting there, or uh, then those people come get seated in. Some more people come get seated in. By the time, about five minutes into this room, there was nobody in there. Now we're like this. I feel like we're just surrounded by tables. Wow. Surrounded by people. Let, let me get to the best part. Lady behind me, probably 400 pounds. Oh, sh Pushing okay. 350. Okay. Says, the guy, the guy comes out and he brings him, his, brings him all the food. And he says, would you guys like some cheese on your pasta? And she goes, I don't want some cheese. Make it snow. <laughs> uh, dude, and I was eating. <laughs> Bro, I was eating. And what? I, I know. I was like, I just, I like, I looked back and I was like, man, that is somebody. Have you ever seen that Derek Jeter commercial where he's talking to the little girl about the lemonade stand? Yes. And he's like, uh -huh. that's somebody that knows what they want with, to do with their life. Yeah. That's somebody that just knows what they want with their life, dude. They're here. They're not here for a long time, but they're here for a good time. Yeah. They're going to enjoy all the cheese, uh -huh. all the pasta. Oh, dude, molten lava chocolate cake before we left. What? Like, yeah, dude, just going in. And I, can, I have to respect that. Like, I couldn't hate on that. I didn't look at them with a side eye. I was just like, I wanted to walk by and give her a fist bump. Yeah. I didn't know if she was that kind of lady or if she would take offense to it. So, so I didn't you didn't. Do it. Yeah. But, dude, I wanted to. I wanted to be like, you know, you are somebody that knows what you want to do with your life. Telling him to make it snow with make cheese. It, make it snow. She <laughs> said, the guy goes, would you like some cheese? She goes, I don't want some cheese. Make it snow. <laughs> I don't want some cheese. That's what she said. I don't want some cheese. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> it was great. I, you got to give props when props are due. Right. So we went to the OG. We get the never ending pasta bowl. Awesome. You all, the, the thing about Olive Garden, if you try to go get the never ending pasta bowl and you try to scam them, they, they're on to you. Yeah. Because you get the first plate and it's a nice big plate and everything's good. Yeah. You get the second, they give you a bowl this big because they know you're about to take a bite and ask for a box, yeah. which is exactly what we did. So we've got about uh, four bites left that we were able to bring home from uh -huh. the never-ending pasta bowl. Thank you, Olive Garden. <laughs> I'm firing shots because it's, why wouldn't you just give me a bowl of pot? Like, really? That's why let you, me have the normal bowl. That's why you still all Let me the, get the normal size bowl. That's why you steal all their Andy's mints at the end. Dude. How many, I how many did you They take? gave us four. The lady was very nice. She oh, gave us four. That's double what they should And have. my lady doesn't like them, so I I killed it. You, you caked mints. up. You yeah. caked up on the Andy's caked mints. Up, caked up on the mints, dude. So it was great. So we, I go on the date night. You're hitting me up about the CMAs. Yeah. And um, and I don't get hit back for a while because you're busy. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I don't even know. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about right now. Hmm. The CMAs are on? Yeah, because you're the country guy. Yep. So I go home, turn on the, uh, turn on the CMAs. We hear a little bit of this going on. Boom. Beer ain't never broke my heart. Wow. I was like, dude, you ever heard this song? I'm all in. Luke Combs. Yeah. I didn't know this guy was that good. Nope. I didn't know who this guy was. Yep. Who is this guy? What's going on? Is he coming to the stampede? I heard they just announced the lineup. I'm trying to get tickets. That all of a sudden was... I got my boots ready. Dude. <laughs> I think we got to take him. To the just stampede? Look, just looking there, picturing yes. him in cowboy boots. Yeah. Jalal. Oh. I'd definitely be out of my element, but I'd be down. Would you Wait. be down to wear a hat, too? <laughs> little Nas X style, little rhinestones on a shirt? Yeah, win in Rome, man. I nice. Guess. You know what? Garth Brooks had a lot more hair than I thought he had. He took off that hat. You're usually ready to Dude, see no hair. hair. Hey, man, when in, when in that, really. <laughs> that guy had a, a flat top. He got hair done. Oh, did he? Yeah, what do you mean? How did he just get hair when he didn't have hair? <laughs> that guy's hair's good. I told Mia that. I go, Garth. Uh, and she doesn't know country. She doesn't know shit about country. But I was like, babe, that guy got his hair done, dude. I was like, he got Bosley. Yeah. He got like some shit installed. He got a, uh, 
what Joe Buck got. Remember I was telling you that story oh, yeah. about Joe Buck? Where he lost his voice for a little a short time? Dude, if you guys have not read Joe Buck's book, I think Joe Buck's an incredible uh, announcer. He was One of the of, best. Kind of his, his father, Jack Buck, a legend in the game. He was born into the industry. But man, his book, dude, he lost his voice. He had hair plug surgery. Uh-huh. He went under and they put the, the tube down his throat. Like the trachea or whatever. And it was resting on his vocal cord to help, you know, the tube while you breathe, while you're having yeah. surgery. Mm-hmm. So he, he, and he woke up. And the tube had been resting on his vocal cord, yeah. and it basically was like the extent of it falling asleep, but in a more extensive way. So it was like a few days. Dude, he woke up and he didn't have his voice. He couldn't talk, and the doctors couldn't tell him what was wrong. Yeah. And he was like, "This is my nightmare. Yeah. I go in to get hair, and I can't use the thing that I do to make it a living anymore. Yeah. This is insane. Crazy. Like, I would be shitting myself. So for the, about four or five days, he had no voice, and then it just slowly started to come back. Oh, my God. Just kind of like when mm-hmm. your leg falls asleep or something like that. Yeah, yeah. dude. Um, that, that tube was resting on that vocal cord for hours and just messed it up. So crazy. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I don't know. Oh, hair. That's what we got to Joe Buck. But, yeah, dude, Garth got hair hair transplant for sure. There's no doubt in my mind. A lot mind. of people yeah. in the industry are doing it. No doubt, man. LeBron, LeBron continues to, and it still uh, doesn't look good. You were telling me that Anthony Davis was like clowning. Le- LeBron's was good for a while though, but yeah, LeBron. Just that other day, I don't know what happened. LeBron or uh, AD was clowning LeBron. I think it was like game two or three uh, of the season, and AD was like, <laughs> you know, clowning him on the side, saying, "Dude, the hair's not good. It's out of place, dog." So <laughs> LeBron took off his little headband and kind of adjusted. Oh, that's <laughs> hilarious. But I don't know if it's any better than Kevin Durant's. Kevin Durant's ain't he ain't combed his hair in in three years. No, he doesn't. And I don't know. What's have going you on. seen? We'll we'll get into a little NBA with Clippers Rockets um, here in a little bit. But did you have you guys seen the uh, amount of interviews Kevin Durant is doing? Have you seen one guy do more hour long interviews? Yeah. When he's not going to play the whole year. He's on tour. Do you see Clay Thompson out doing all these interviews? No, he did one last night at the actual game. That's it. Side, That's it. A, a quick yeah. little sideline joint. Do you think if quick Steph hit. Curry's hand is, is a long-term deal, if he's broken for a long time, you think Steph Curry's going to be out here doing interviews, no. hour-long, uh-uh. sentimental sentimental pieces? Dude, it's the New York thing. I don't it's like the it. Move. It's the move. He's it, on that, like, that press run. Yeah, he's on that press run. You know, the new guy in New York, dude. I think I'm... I'm on the edge of going like this with Kevin Durant. I respect his game, but I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of. I just don't like his personality. That's all, really? and that's fine. I, I just don't think we would vibe as people. It's not a kind of guy. I'm like, oh man, I'd love to kick it with KD. <laughs> I just, you know what I mean. That's right. kind of where I'm on the tipping point. Like, hey, good player, but personality wise, like I'm not a fan of the guy. Yeah, if that makes sense. He seems stale. Just from what I get in the media. Yeah, yeah. From from what I see there. But getting back to the uh, CMAs, what was what was um, we can buzz through that really pretty quick. Yeah. Halsey was there. I was kind of shocked by that. Wow, that's your crush. I, it's <laughs> you yeah. got a girl crush. It's just a, a little, little crush. crush. Yes. Yeah. Um. You know. Yeah. I think she's very talented. Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, you know, it was great to see her. And she actually joined Lady Antebellum, which I think in country music. And I'm again, I'm not, a, I'm not an expert here. Yeah. But I think Lady Antebellum probably brings some of the most beautiful harmonies in the game. Mm. Would you say that? I could, yeah, I could second it. The two guys and yeah, the girl, yeah, and oh my god! I always god. confuse them and the, this group, Little Big Town. Little Big Town is a little different. Yeah, I was kind of. This is Little Big Town. Know, yes, yes, yes. I okay. don't know who's who or what's what. Gotcha. But Halsey was there. You Halsey were crushing was crushing on her pretty yeah. hard, and she had a guitar with her. Yep. And the first song, of course, was a Lady Antebellum song, and she didn't play the guitar. I'm like, what is she doing, man? Why? Play the guitar. If you're gonna have a guitar, don't have it just as like an aesthetic pleasing right, right, thing right. on your lap. Like, play this. And then, of course, they go into her new song, Mm -hmm. which is actually a part of the Beats commercial. Do you see that? No. The new Beats commercial is Halsey. It's uh, Letitia Bufani, the Mm. skater. um, uh, I can't remember which NFL star. I don't know if it was Russell Wilson or who, but there's like four four of the best in their industry, you know, rocking the new Beats Pro, right? And Halsey is the song that surprises. Oh, nice, dude. So, and that's the song they played. So she starts picking the guitar on it. They do the harmonies. I'm like, what song were they doing? I, I watched it, but I'm trying to remember now, and I'm, um, I'm blanking. Was it? A, it was a country song, right? Uh, their first Halsey one. Yes. did some country. Yeah, shit. yeah. Halsey did the Lady Antebellum country song, and then they did the Halsey song. Afterwards. What do you think of Musgraves? Casey, Casey Musgraves. Um. Me and my girl don't like her, and I can't tell you why. Ah. We're just not fans, and I don't know if it's her voice, the way she sounds. Something about it, I get it. Like, my girl, ah, she kind of annoys me. I'm like, I get it. I'm with you. I, I get it. Too. I'm annoyed, too. I don't it, know why. It sounds like a very young, young, like, 
She carried Willie Nelson through that performance last night, though. Did, Did you, you see, see Willie Nelson staring <laughs> at like the teleprompter? I don't think Dude, he remembered the lyrics. I don't, I don't know what he was doing. He was he was smoking, guy. <laughs> that guy was uh, he had some material with. How him. is that guy? Eighty nine now? Uh, no, I don't know. Close. I think he's in his eighties, and he is just he? had a he just had a vocal or some kind of throat surgery. Man. Or some kind of breathing. Maybe you could look that up. He was he was having a breathing issue, dude. I can't and he had just had he's surgery. Still doing it. Yeah. I did not expect to see him there no. trying to perform. So you could tell he's still clearly having some effects. Sure. Uh, with the throat surgery, I'm not sure if that's affecting his memory. Maybe that's the pot. But either yeah. way, yeah, he was looking at the prompter, and Musgraves was looking at him like, "Don't worry, I got like, this. I got you, bro. I got this. Yeah. Don't worry. You could see it in her eyes, dude. She was making direct eye contact with him. Like, just don't. Do you can yeah. do anything you want, but die." Just don't die on me. Everything else is fine. I got this. I want to see 2018. They did a his lung collapsed. Oh I really? Nothing recent. Nothing. Oh really? I thought huh. he had. Well, maybe it was just a. I thought he had a breathing issue. Maybe I'm. I don't know what I'm talking about. Hmm. Uh, favorite performance of the night was it that for you for Halsey? Halsey was probably one of them. Um, I did like Reba's performance. You know where she kept, I didn't see it. She kept stripping layers of clothing, and not that it was like provocative or anything. It was just like she just she's just such a class act, and she's always been known for you know what she wears and just her performance. Her performance was great. Yeah. It really was. But Luke Combs, like I said, being introduced to this this guy, right. um, and I, I actually wrote some of the lyrics down, and I was I was amazed by it. So like, the ice cold beer never broke my heart. So good, like diamond rings and football teams tore this old boy apart. Yeah. I love it, man. It's great. It's so good, dude. I'll tell you what, country, you know, with all the music that I listen to, which I don't listen to much anymore. We, we you know, we've talked about it. We mostly listen to podcasts and talk radio, radio shows, and, that yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, trying to improve our shit, yeah. Because I'm just not a big fan of the music, but that doesn't mean it's bad. It just means it's a phase. It's something that I'm not interested in as much as I once was, but I miss music because I used to be the music guy. You, you know, you know it. Million you, you shows, would say, yeah. You would say, look, dog, who is this? And I could tell you. I could tell you about their family, their friends, what they did, you know, how many kids they have. Thing, yeah. That was my thing. And so I've gotten out of it. But I think this country music is kind of bringing me back a little bit because of the lyrical nice, um, dude. quality of it. And and something like that, it just, you know, I, I grew up on a farm, so it just kind of resides with me and, 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 and I can understand it and I get it. So maybe I'm a country fan now. I'm all in. Did you, um, I think country has just become, like I said, it's, it's, I've said this before. I think it's the modern day rock and roll. Yeah. Uh, it's just kind of that good, feel good music that you can listen to with anyone in the car. And rock and roll, they were saying provocative things back in the day. Some of those songs weren't, when you really listen to them, they weren't good songs. They weren't about good things. Right. But the beat, they had such a, you know, everything from Dire Straits to Steely Dan to Sticks, all that Yacht Rock, dude. Yeah. Speaking of Yacht, we, we had some Yacht Rock going on <laughs> yesterday. At in the, the vlog, uh, yeah. In the vlog. But the all that Yacht Rock, dude, is kind of what, now country is like replace that because uh -huh. that's gone. No one makes music like that anymore. And country has almost become that yeah. in a w way where, you, yeah, you can throw it on with the kids in the car. It's wholesome. There's a lot of good values in it. It's a lot of real yeah. storytelling type shit. And you're not getting that from really any right. other genre. Well, and I think you're seeing it's a lot teams of teams of writers in the room. And I, right. you can still get that in country, but not as much. You're seeing so much cross pollination too with country than maybe what you ever had. I mean, I know Florida Georgia line, the Nelly stuff. Um, but we look at, and some of the stuff Tim McGraw did with even Nelly. Uh, but, but now you're seeing like Halsey, a modern, like, you know, R and B, you know, pop singer and, and Taylor Swift kind of did this right so she was country she started out country and then evolved into more of what the pop is today um, but this cross pollination Chris Stapleton last night dude with Pink, I know yeah yeah dude you know what no homo but I, I I'm in love with Chris Stapleton his voice blows Sick, my huh? mind dude. I'm, I, I need to go back and watch that he performance. Is, he's probably got the sickest voice I've heard in the in the last 30 years at least he has just got this voice that just grips you, and dude, it, it like it like rips my soul. Just and it just makes me feel so good. What about uh, Love Chris Stapleton? What about what about this one right here, bud? This this was this my this is my performance. Is this you know is this the new Blink One Eighty Two? No, kind of like sounds it. like it. It's it sounds my, like yeah. What's my age again? <laughs> <laughs> I took it's her cool. out. It was a Friday yeah. night. What? Yeah, this is um, Old Dominion. My lady loves yeah. this jam. You know what? Robin really liked this. So we were cooking pasta and all this kind of stuff, and I'm taking notes on the CMAs. Babe, I'm taking notes. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, Stay, yeah. Hey, get over here. <laughs> Stir this pasta. I'm like, yeah. Look at her. So anyways, Old Dominion came on. And dude, did you see the microphone they were using? Like that yeah, super old yeah. traditional mic? And Robin's like, babe, I really like this song. Yeah. I, said, I do too. I said, it's nice to agree on something. 
Dude, you know what my lady I'm told pumped. me? I never heard this song in my life yeah. until last night. Yeah. You know what my lady told me? For one, I like this song. Uh-huh. It reminds me of you. And I start listening to it. She tells me it reminds me of me. Uh-huh. I start listening and to it. And you're like, what are you talking about? And then I'm like, damn, she's right, dude. I don't, she's right. Like, I, you know, she's come into my life and become like a partner and a teammate uh-huh. and an amazing friend and someone that has made me not a one man band because you know my family situation is not yeah. great. Mm-hmm. All sides of my family. I'm not. Cl- I'm not super close with any right. part of my family. I'm not super super close. I've just kind of always been a one man band because mm-hmm. I think that's how my dad is, and so I kind of just have taken that on. And uh, <clears throat> as I move forward, it's or as I listen to the song, I was like, "Damn, she's right." Like she, she kind of came in and mm-hmm. showed me how to to not be a Rolling Stone alone, right? <laughs> Right, in a weird way, yeah. Right? It was just great. I was able to kind of listen and totally understand in the moment exactly yeah. what she was talking about. It was, it was dope. That's a moment, dude. So it was a cool, that was my favorite performance just because of that, the moment we got to share. And it was yeah. it was great. It was fun. That makes me want to make it rain cheese. Just hearing all that. <laughs> you make it snow, guy. Oh, make it snow. Damn it. Blizzard, guy. Blizzard. <laughs> the blizzard it, of cheese. Make it rain cheese. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll kind of um, move on from that. Let me get back to, uh, let me hit the chat really quick. Make sure I'm not missing anything. Y'all see the bread 11's dropped. We did. Mm-hmm. Uh, two pounds sterling, no less, Albaroon said. I'm assuming with the, uh, it's according to the donation. Um, shout to Pena for matching his own. He matched it because uh, one of you guys made the shot. Oh, wow. Oh, did he? Nice. Dow did, yeah. Renzo, Dow, sell me your 10 and a half, bro. Which I told him, yes. After the v- review, uh, hit me up, you know, just DM me, and we'll talk for sure. All right, we'll move on. Armando, dude, give me a little, uh, or actually, wait, Socratic Mind, a dollar. Uh, give me a give me a uh, symbol for him. Socratic. And then my man, Armando Silva, a.k.a. Art Mondo Silva. Sick painter, man. Very, very dope work. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know yep. this guy. Yeah, nice. Yep. Maybe I have to come and have him do some shit in the new stud, bro. Damn. That would be dope. Oh, AC Lau. Dollar from AC Lau. He said something uh, funny, too, actually. AC Lau, he said, <laughs> he said, the most underrated studios with a... S2 Studios. Nice. S2 Studios. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh, I see Lau. Uh, dude, Neighborhood. This is totally... Neighborhood, I'm with you, bro. Casey is a beast, and I don't even listen to country. Yeah. She is a beast, dog. She and that's what, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't even know what... I can't put my finger on what annoys me or what I'm not a fan of. And it might be the fact that I've only heard her here and there and just in passing. So, mm-hmm. But also, did you see her Christmas special she's dropping? Did you see the commercial for the the Casey Musgraves Christmas special? No, I didn't see that one. Dude, she's partnered with like Lana Del Rey and like a bunch of different artists that come through and perform with her. And do wow. there's probably ten or twelve high high level artists that come through and perform with her on that show. That it's sounds a, awesome. Christmas special coming out. Sounds awesome if you're a Musgraves fan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Con Lee Stapleton gets me moist. Pause. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> Two dollars from my man nice. Con Lee. Con Lee gets it. Thank you, Con Lee. T-Mobile, country's the only music I listen to, but mostly podcasts. I love the lyrics and mostly the positive vibe of it. Exactly, dude, exactly. T-Mobile, we're best friends. That, uh, <laughs> we're best friends. That hits the point home. You get it. Um, let's move to the, let's talk about the Disney Plus stuff really quickly. Yes. I don't know how long this convo's going to go because I didn't download Disney Plus. Same. I didn't, I didn't look either. at Disney Plus. My lady wants it. I saw some things online. Did he You know who did? You? Monday Midsole, I bet. Oh, he's... I mean, he's I probably he's co-owner. Got, he's got stock he's got in it stock at least. Disney Plus, yeah, he's a big sure. time shareholder for sure. Which he's on right now. John King has got stock. John King. <laughs> you too. You too. Did you guys get it? You said no. No, I got the Apple one I instead. It yet. I did the Apple uh, TV Plus subscription, and the reason I did that, they gave me a year's worth ah. for free because I bought. I got that the, recently too. You should do you it. The phone. Is it and the reason it? I did it was I love Jennifer Aniston, right? Right. And Steve Carell and Jennifer Aniston have a new show called The Morning Show. And I started watching that with Robin. We're now four episodes deep. It's incredible. It ah, also stars. The, it also starts uh, stars Reese Witherspoon. Nice. It is awesome, dude. It is awesome because that's what we want to do. Whether it's like broadcasting sports, broadcasting the regular news, or just talking shit, that's what they do. So I love that. I love the characters. It starts out very vicious, almost really dark, but it's really good, dude. How many, do they drop it all at once or do they give you an episode a week? How does that work? Um, so right. you got Apple Plus. How much did you sign? Oh, sorry, let me, I got a lot yeah, of questions. Yeah, for sure. And then I'm going to get to you. I got some questions for you too, Jalal. You got Apple Plus for how much? So it's going to cost me $5 a month. Okay. 
win my one year subscription for free for buying the iPhone, iPhone 11 yep. Pro expires. Okay. Okay. So you're getting it free. You got the new phone. You got it free as well. Uh, I didn't sign up for it, but I got the email. Yeah. Okay. So you're not, you haven't even explored it yet. No. Okay. Okay. Back to you. Yes. You, the morning show, when they drop the show, do they give you all the episodes at once? How does it, how does it, how does it go? So far, it's most of the episodes at once. Okay. Because we went from one episode and we thought that was it, you know, and then the next one, just like Netflix, they just keep on coming, man. So we're now three episodes in and it's phenomenal. They also have some original programming, so that's one of their original programming okay. shows. They also have another one with Jason Momoa, dude. And oh, it's yeah. I heard and it's called C. Okay. And it's basically a tribe or cult of a bunch of people together and they're all blind. And then what happens is the premise of the story is Jason Momoa and his wife or whatever partner have a baby and the baby is born a being able to see. So it's this first ah. like generation after generations of not being able to see right. and the the turmoil and all the things that come with this. Interesting. So it's pretty crazy. Yeah. My I aunt, haven't watched much of it yet, just the trailer. My aunt would really love that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, she teaches the blind kids. So the programming is way sick, which is what I would say. Cool. Now, getting back to Disney Plus, my lady's beating me up saying, Hey, we need this subscription. I said, Why? Why? And she's like, not only for the Disney movie, she's like, this new lady in the tramp that they're doing is supposedly just people are in love with it. And she wants to see that. And it's kinda like it's kinda like done like the Lion King, you know, where it where it's where it's not fake animals, it's real animals, and I don't know how they film this in that way, but it's, I guess this Lady and the Tramp is the same same thing. So it's like live actual animals doing it, but I don't know how it's done, but she's like super interested because she's a big dog, you know, big so, dog lover. Okay, I, I'd be interested to hear, like, like Neighborhood, I got Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus for one year free through Verizon. First of all, is that something you have to do... Uh, what do you have to do to do to get that neighborhood? Yeah. Help help our listeners out you have here. To sign a contract. Number two, what do you like better and why? Um, and as as you get to that, I'll ask you guys, how, where do you think this whole streaming war is going? Everyone is become everyone is putting together their own streaming platform, and I would call it a war because I think that's what it's going to be before it's all said and done. I don't know. Is this the first time? It feels like in all these. Let me gather my thoughts here. Doesn't it feel like in old industries, not old, but in older industries and pretty much everything we've seen, at the end, there's always been two big competitors. It's been Coke, Pepsi, mm -hmm. Mac, PC, Nike, Reebok, or, you know. Yeah. It, it, it feels like there's there's two big competitors most of the time. Apple, Samsung. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, uh, great, great, uh, yeah. great point there with phones. Where does it go from here? Because everyone's developing their own and it feels like everyone, there was, it feels like there was only a couple and now everyone's branching away and creating their own. Is that going to be the future? Or are we going to see everyone slowly creep back together and it's going to become two Amazon and Apple or, yeah. or something like that? Or do we have enough big companies they can all stand on their own? You're going to see a ton of brands, but at the mm -hmm. end of the day, it all funnels back up yeah. to three or two, two, two or three right. conglomerates. You know, okay. Everybody's going to start buying out. So you're going to have these small companies, just like the tech boom back in the uh, late 90s, right? Yeah, when yeah. they had, you know, everybody worked for a tech company and all these kind of fold it up and then you know, had Google survive, right? Mm -hmm. You had Yahoo survive out of those. I think that's going to be kind of the same thing with this. So they're all going to kind of get started and, and, and put all this money into it. And then they're going to get bought out for the two biggest or three biggest and then have those. Who as, are as, those? Who is well, there at Disney, the end? Disney seems like they're not playing. No, Apple Netflix hasn't been playing yeah. though. Netflix They're the ones that have not been playing in this space. Everyone yeah. else is just getting in. You heard what they just did, right? They just teamed up with Nickelodeon. Who's that, Netflix? Netflix. Wow. That's a big time partnership. And that's yeah. to produce original content with new, no shit. new characters. How about oh, that? Oh, wow. So I just, dude, plus they bring back, like, a, what if they bring back a bunch of the old library, like all the, uh, uh, are you afraid of the dark? And so some of the loot shit from your we shorts. Kids? Would you guys, oh, they I don't know about you, but would you guys camp, rock with all that? Camp on a wanna. That would make my neck, Netflix. We hold you in our hearts. <laughs> But when we think about you, you makes it me want to fart. fart. Get it right or pay the get price. Get it right. Come on, bud, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> makes me want to get it right or pay the price. It's a mix. It's I hope we never part. Yeah. <laughs> get it right or pay the price. <laughs> With his cream on his nose, his little sunscreen you remember on his shows? nose. Please tell that? me you remember Salute Your Shorts. No. He's <sighs> too young. He's negative four when that drops. <laughs> negative four. Check it out. I just looked at Disney Plus. Uh, check out how many, how many signups do you uh, think they had uh, since their initial launch? Uh, Within a short time. No right? idea. Give me the numbers. 10 million signups. Disney Plus? Yes. Wow. How crazy Do we have any numbers on Apple Plus? 
What's that? Do we have any numbers on Apple Plus? I in don't comparison? yet. No, I can't yet. So, well, so check this out though. I do Apple's have this. Apple's always secret about their numbers. I can't even find out how many of you listen to podcasts on Apple's Nightmare. Right. So that's 10 million signups plus since the launch, which was just Tuesday. Oh, wow. Just to put that into perspective there, check this out. For a comparison, Disney owned Hulu, uh, claimed more than 28 million subscribers in May, and Netflix claimed more than 60 million paid domestic members and over 97 million international in its third quarter of 2019. So just to kind of throw Repeat some Repeat those numbers again. Okay. So uh, Disney owned Hulu. So Hulu's owned by Disney, Disney. Yes, they own them. 28 million. Claimed more than 20, uh, sub, uh, 28 million subscribers in May. Netflix claimed more than 60 million paid domestic members and over 97 million international. Dude, they're that's they're what I'm it. that's what I'm saying. They're I don't they've think been Apple doing TV Plus is anywhere near. Yeah, they've been doing this kind of damage. That's what I'm trying to say. I think like, Apple's on that. We bottom. can't now. Apple as a company and Netflix as a company. That's not yeah. a battle, right? But right. as far as the streaming goes, yeah. you know. But Apple's streaming service obviously gets Apple's money. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna Netflix has the money to play in this yeah. space. They've been playing in this space. Sure, but dude, that's what scares you is Disney money, Amazon money, and Apple money are just. What is that compared to Netflix money? Because Netflix money is crazy. Mm -hmm. But when you when you consider those three entities, because I wouldn't even call those companies. Yeah. I mean, they're entity between. We just talked about it earlier Disney owning ESPN, ABC. I mean, mm -hmm. now I didn't even know they owned Hulu. Did yeah, you? I think at some no. I think at some point uh, Netflix gets bought out. Yeah. Because I don't think they can compete with Apple. That's a and lot. Because because you're talking Apple, dude. Disney. You can't compete. They have oh, wow. actual physical products. So the the, the the people have to have the company that really pioneered this is the one that goes first. You think not first, but you think they're they f end up folding shop, or they end up uh, folding up. They'll shop. still be involved. I mean, the brand might still yeah. exist, but they have to get bought out. By I think somebody. yeah. They have to gotcha. Merge or... It's just like with telecom with the spectrum battle. There's going to have to be other companies that buy in or buy out other people to get that spectrum. This is that going to be that same type of thing. Obviously, they're not battle, battling for spectrum. Yeah, I think Netflix but... is huge in debt. Like they're just blowing money on original content. Well, dude, yeah, the original content and the actors and actresses that they're paying, they're oh, paying yeah. top dollar for these individuals, mm -hmm. and it's original content, right? So. You know. Let me catch up on a few of these comments. We'll continue the convo. So people got some stuff to add here. Uh, Dow, give me the symbol for Joseph McLean. Love the show, fellas. Dude, nice. Joseph, I is love he, you, bro. Is Joseph new? I, I, I think, I've, no, I've seen him in oh, here okay. a couple times. Welcome. Past, past few shows. Welcome, Yeah, Joe. thank you, Joseph, man. Thank I appreciate you, you. Glad you're getting value out of the show and you enjoy it, dude. Thank you for the donation, bro. Mm. Uh, Disney Plus is dope AF. Renzo, Anna Choff, just got off my call. I can actually listen now. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> to Conley donating two dollars for being a former Tennessee for being a former alcoholic Tennessee whiskey gets me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. He's still on Stapleton. I like Conley. This Conley, guy's my guy. Classic. Dude, he's down in Louisiana. He's got to have some of that going on. Got to Tennessee whiskey. Disney Plus game over from AC Lau. Niall, you guys just checking in from Ireland. Literally just hit on the shock drop of the Air Jordan Bread Elevens. Congrats. Bro. Congrats, bro. Nice. Congrats, we were talking about that. So you must have got the draw over there in the UK, hmm. or in Ireland. Is it the same? Ireland, yeah, it's got to be a draw over there. UK. AC Lau, no better time for the consumer. Will also force bundles to happen, i.e. Spotify plus Disney. Mm -hmm. There you go. What do you think about that? What do you think about the bundle life? You think, you think more... Uh, I think it's good, but yeah, it's just going to go from us having... You know, regular cable subscriptions to now having all these different streaming services. We're pri they're probably going to phase out. You know, original like the how cable is right now, mm -hmm. and just move towards everybody having streaming services. Because you yeah. see, like the Office or uh, NBC pulling the Office and Parks and Rec and stuff off of Netflix to go to their own streaming service. Mm -hmm. So I think they're just anticipating people are just canceling. You know, traditional cable, traditional and cable. they're just going to move to streaming. Did, uh, Mr. Daniel, everyone is chasing Netflix. I would say currently. Yeah. Yeah. I think Netflix is probably mm. the staple, but as Disney Plus comes out, I would say it's over. I yeah. mean, it, to some degree. Subscription to TV is so diverse. Can't uh, can't be bothered getting all subscriptions. Um, I Oh, yeah, same thing. Neighborhood for with Verizon. So I just got the new iPhone, and it's the same deal. Dow mentioned for Apple TV+. Plus. Mm -hmm. Then if you have the unlimited plan through Verizon, they offer you a year of Disney Plus for free as well. And don't they do some of exclusive NFL programming still? They're the official sponsor of NFL, so I know they, they probably have Dude. the... <laughs> and I know, and I know, and I know. This is a tough question to ask here because Jalal is still uh, with the T-Mobile here. But uh, is it time to switch to, to the Big Red? 
Oh, we just talked about it, dude. Who's, this, who's the NBA sponsor? I was waiting for T-Mobile to sponsor NBA. I know. So well, long. they did for a long time, right? When the sidekicks were out. Oh, yeah, way They back. were one of the big, big sponsors of NBA. Because, man, if we got that, like, a MLB at bat, but if we got some version of that for League Pass, yeah. that'd be sweet. I'm not about the baseball life, so I could I could lose that. But, dude, a little bit of NFL sponsorship, a little bit of Disney Plus for free, a little bit of Apple. I mean, Verizon, yeah. might, Verizon might be something to look at. Well, I like that. I like that. I hope um, your boss is tuned in. <laughs> we did, Yeah, we were talking about it yesterday when we were out there. Yeah. Uh, Disney Plus has way more content right now. Obviously, Star Wars. <laughs> Mr. Daniel, Star Disney Plus has Star Wars content. It's a wrap. <laughs> what do you guys? I think so. Here's something we need to uh, here. We can kind of wrap up this convo with this. What do you guys think happens to Comcast and Time Warner? These huge companies that now control all the market. They did control the TV market for so long. Mm-hmm. Now there's all these streaming services, and we're talking about networks pulling their content off of what these or you know away from what these companies offer. Is there going to be network television anymore is there still going to be network television it's just going to be streamed the reason why they still they still exist is because of like live sports and right those mm-hmm. big events where yep. you have like abc and nbc like those main channels we don't really have a solution for that what I do mean, you do Hulu yeah, has right. live sports but yeah do they i not. haven't heard that well <laughs> yeah <laughs> and and especially with a lot of these so i've done a lot of streaming services i've done sling i've done you know, uh, YouTube TV. And what you're going to notice is every one of them has their downfalls, you know, and, and usually it's local TV programming mm-hmm. and it's all based off of your, you know, inner network and where you live. Um, you know, one is going to have Fox. The other one's not going to have Fox. One's going to have, you know, the NBC, CBS and, you know, maybe missing one other one. So it's, it, That's it's what they're a, holding on to. They're just holding on by <laughs> yeah. Fox and CBS and all these, you know, local channels. Exactly. Yeah. It's crazy, man. It really is crazy. Just the way we're going to see it uh, change. Hulu has a bunch of old school Nickelodeon shows currently from Matthew Jones. Do they? I'm going to have to check that out. Donkey Lips. Hey, dude. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> That's good shit. That is really good shit. Uh, let me see. Oh, Dow, give me the uh, the thing. What do we got, Misha? Some funds for y'all. I'm working at Big Red with your girl TTF or with your girl Raquel TTF. I don't know who the hell Raquel is. Huh. Misha Moustakis, go the way of Blockbuster. There you go. Um, we need to do Dow. We need to hit some shots, bro. Okay. We need to. Uh, yeah, we need to get some. We need to hit some shots. Dow's gonna grab the basketball. A lot of people are saying their Disney Plus is crashing, though. Oh, really? So far, there's a <laughs> on social media. Plus fail is trending. Oh and, uh, no! They can't connect to the servers. People are people are having Disney Plus issues. Huh. That sucks. All right, go ahead and uh, hit that real quick, Dow. All right, what are we shooting for now? Is this the uh, Con Lee gets me moist? Pause. Dude, we are... I think that's where we're at. Are we going to do all this? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, man. No, you know what? We don't even have a a backer for today. We don't have a Don Yeah, we don't want to waste it. Okay. We don't even have a Don, yeah. Um, I could use the practice, but let's not waste any (laughs) time. We both could use the practice. (laughs) Let's not waste any time here. All right, let's move... um, Let's move from the streaming convo. Rockets, Rockets, Clippers. Mm-hmm. Last night, I didn't see the game, but I saw obviously the highlight and yeah. the the most important highlight: some family feud going on <laughs> with uh, Austin Rivers and Doc Rivers. Yes. Did you Did you see this highlight, Jalal? Yeah, I saw it. You guys all saw it. All right. So if you guys didn't see it in the audience, I don't want to play the highlight for you. The video. J- yeah, just because I think um, I think the video is will get clipped on it. Disney will. Clip us, yeah. I think ESPN. so, dude. Yeah. You know, you know how it goes, man. We get we get clipped for everything. Feels like it. Hulk Hogan music a couple weeks ago, just because it was going too long. Well, it's because nonsense. it's because we didn't know what we were doing. I I blame Joel and myself for that. <laughs> right, <laughs> we, we, were, we were sitting on it too long. That's that's our fault. Yeah. So I hear I ha- here I have the um I have the clip, and I'm just gonna play you the audio because I think the audio does it justice. They do a pretty good job of explaining what happened here, and then uh, we'll fully explain um, after we listen to this audio here. Let me uh, fire it up. Oh, good. 
was that? Austin just... Look at Austin. Oh, there you go. So good, man. So what happened is uh, <clears throat> there was a heated moment in the game last night with Doc Rivers. Uh, and he, basically, he was requesting a challenge, mm -hmm. but he had requested it. You only get 30 seconds. Correct. So he had tried to make request the challenge after 30 seconds. He was heated that they were not. And even though he would have been right, I think his challenge was warranted. That's what it on sounds the call. like. Yeah. yeah. So he would have gotten it overturned, but it was too late. So... He got into an argument with the uh, yeah. official, well, and the argument came through because they actually uh, they actually had to charge him a timeout for that. Um, but then they were going to take the timeout away by two judges. But then the head uh, uh, head ref comes in and says, "No, you you have to have the timeout. We, you can't get that back." So that's where it got heated, and Doc Rivers. That's where it finally, you know, he he spouted off and got the actual technical for that because they actually took a timeout away from him that he deservedly was supposed to be able to keep. Mm. So. That was the issue. Gotcha. So then so then he does get end up getting teed up. Yeah. Austin Rivers goes to tee him up, starts <laughs> clapping. Yeah. The crowd goes crazy. Uh, I didn't see Sports Center last night. I passed out super early because we were getting up early for the cast. Yeah. But, um, do you have the video of uh, basically what it's – I think we have an inside look at what it's going to look like. At the, at, at the Doc Rivers family household? Yeah, at the Rivers household at Thanksgiving a second for that one. Oh, you got to uh, sorry. I just thought you'd let me go through the comments here. Um Oh, dude, we need another uh we need another another symbol. Another symbol crack? Yeah. Hey, there we go. Shout out to MDA24 coming through to drop a little in the collection plate so y'all can grab some gummies. Just don't pull a Dion Waiters. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> Great like, comment. Great like comment. It, dude. Way to go, man. Way to go. Great job. Carlos, off topic, but I'm so far behind on the cast since I started, uh, since it started going live. I've got to get back on schedule with you guys. Yeah, Carlos, get your life together, dog. I'm, Carlos, I'm saying, bro. we're here for you. You just need to be here for us, my friend. Dog, I get it, man. We drop two shows a week, two hours plus sometimes, you know, with content. I get that not everybody can tune into everything all the time, mm -hmm. but don't worry, man. We get to the new studio. We're going to have some short form content. We're going to have more studio shows coming out of there. And we're also going to uh, probably have a little bit shortened cast. It'll be three times a week, maybe an hour and a half, maybe hour and 15 minutes, you know, something like that. So there's some different things we're messing with, man. I know a lot of... Um, People say two plus hours twice a week is a lot of content to keep up with and consume. Uh, but I also understand everyone's going to use this show differently, man. There's going to yeah. be people that listen to every single word and every single thing we say, and they catch every episode. And there's going to be people that just come through when they can, and uh, we're still homies either way. And just get the heater's advice and make a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> We're just printing money on the heaters. So, yeah, you're welcome. Which uh, we'll, we'll continue to do here in a little while. Love it. Uh, little late, but I'm in here and we live. Blake P, what up, bro? How you Welcome. doing, man? Uh, there's a video. Oh, God. Is this oh, part of the family the way you act? At the oh, house? At uh, Thanksgiving? The no. The Rivers household Thanksgiving? Basically told me he's not a part of the family anymore. Yeah. He said he's not a part of the family and does this. <laughs> 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 That's gonna be a great Thanksgiving. Dow sent that to me from Twitter. I was, I showed my girl. I was laughing for about five minutes straight, yeah. trying to go to bed. Shit was I'm hilarious. not a part of the family anymore. <laughs> He's like, I'm not a part of the family. You don't consider me family. <laughs> then just tips the damn tips the, the tips whole Thanksgiving, the whole table Thanksgiving table dinner. Hey, we need a uh, shout out to Connor Terry for a little donation there. Nice. Damn. There we go. Welcome, uh, Connor. Two dollars from Connor. Little late, but here in style. I see you, bro. Uh, Blake P as well. Five dollars. Sink that shot, fellas. All right, I got this one. Dow, Dow you got it. it. This is it. This is it. Come on, Blake. Come on, Dow. Stop messing around. Let's see. Oh. oh, too hard off the backboard. It's all good, bro. We'll uh, we'll get it. We'll get it one of these days, man. We'll get it one of these days. All's fair in love and basketball. Lol. Mm. Brian, what up, bro? How you doing, man? Good to see you in here. I would agree with that. Even, uh, if, even if it's in the family. So then um, let's move into the Kaepernick stuff really quickly before mm -hmm. we go into on this day. And uh, I don't want to spend a crazy, we don't need to spend a crazy amount of time on it. But I thought this was very interesting. We've talked about the Kaepernick situation a couple of different times. And where do you come out on it, Dal? Where do you come out on this, this, this development? What is going on? Uh, give me your thoughts here. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, my take on this is it, it feels weird. It doesn't feel organic. It feels forced. So 
I know Kaepernick and obviously the NFL have not had a good relationship. I know there was money paid to Kaepernick uh, via pain and suffering, via the collusion case. Um, this to me, especially as I kind of watched the events transpire and how like, hey, Colin Kaepernick says literally, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to uh, work. He literally says, I'm just getting word from my representatives that the NFL league office reached out to them about a workout in Atlanta on Saturday. I've been in shape and ready for this three years. Can't wait to see the head coaches and GMs on Saturday. As almost a full day goes by, this whole thing starts to kind of deflate and people are pulling out, you know, nobody's going to show up. Um, This just feels really forced and not organic. And what this takes me down, my take is this. I believe this is part of the NFL and Colin Kaepernick agreement. And this Mm. feels like a part of the collusion, uh, collusion case. I think the NFL was trying to organize this and make it like hey we're the nfl we care we're going to set aside some time we're going to send the best coaches we're going to have a real good look we're going to have a fair look at you and we're going to make this event Mm -hmm. to give you a little bit of clout and give you a little bit of shine put you back in the news this to me feels like an agreement from the nfl with the collusion case that's what i'm going to say it just feels strange so here's the weird i as much as i've 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 been on record on this show. I've talked about I don't think Colin Kaepernick is really that good. I don't think he's starting level talent in the NFL these right. days. A great backer. For I'm not saying he's not starting level talent. Like he couldn't work up to that. He couldn't, mm-hmm. you know, um, come out of a backup role and end up being the starter and do fine. Right. I don't think that he is can just step in on a team and become a starter right now. Because I think if he could, he'd be employed no matter what was going on. Mm-hmm. And that's just the way of the NFL. Those coaches, those staffs, they're going to do whatever they have to do to win. This is a bottom line win now business. Anthem, Mm non-anthem, bullshit, non-bullshit, wife beating, non-wife beating. We've seen it all. We've seen it all. It's the fact that the guy wasn't good enough to play. Now, what I will say, I, I think Colin Kaepernick is getting screwed here. I think this is bullshit by the NFL. I think it's a ton of damage control because how are you going to send this guy? Now, I don't know how much of the story you guys know, but... Not only did they give him a two-hour window to respond to this, they had they sent. Let me let me run it down from the top. First, a representative from the league called a select group of reporters last week and suggested that they should be available the following Tuesday for a worthwhile news development. The mm. NFL wouldn't say what it would be, just that reporters should be ready to share some breaking news. Wow! When the day arrived, the NFL called Kaepernick's representatives for the first time in more than a year, instructing them that the league was willing to hold a private pro day style workout for Kaepernick in Atlanta in four days if he accepted a memo would be sent out to every nfl team inviting them to attend let's unpack that really quickly yeah why would the nfl call reporters a week before they call colin kaepernick and even or his his representatives and And even even inform him of a workout because they know this is going to be news regardless if he accepts or he declines because they're now backing him into a corner and they're saying look we gave you a shot yeah we gave you a chance you didn't want to do it and he only has two hours. So after that, if accepted, so that's where we're at currently. Right. The next step is they give him two hours. They give him a two-hour window to accept that. At that, that their time, mm-hmm. their place, all that good stuff. Right. It says it's going to be in Atlanta. Uh-huh. They don't. They they tell him he's. They don't give him any options. He asks. He writes back. Hey, can I move it to Tuesday? To to the following Tuesday, instead of ninety-six hours from mm-hmm. when you're telling me this. Can I can I get a little bit of time? Yeah. Can I move it to Tuesday? No. They tell him. They tell him, no, it's Saturday. Can I move the time? It's Saturday at this time. This is when it is. They give him no out. They give him no opportunities to change anything, which doesn't make any sense to me. But again, it's the NFL backing him into a corner. If he doesn't accept, they have news. If he accepts, they have news. Yeah. That's why they call, they did this. This is clearly, I don't know if you're correct in what you're saying. Sure. I think that's a great take. It just feels. Yeah. No, I I think it's a great take. I think, you know, it makes sense. I don't know if that's true or not, Mm -hmm. but- what I do know is the NFL, this isn't genuine. Not this isn't all. something that the NFL wanted to do. Don't usually don't private teams or uh, individual teams hold workouts for players. The NFL never has held a workout yeah. for one individual player ever. They've never hosted anything. Let alone a guy that's been out of the league for three years. That has caused a lot of scrutiny <clears throat> towards the brand. It just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It makes no sense at all. I just, I don't get it. So as we uh, as we talk about this, I want to make sure I'm clear. 
I'm on Colin Kaepernick's side 3,000% in this. I think yeah. in this instance, you know, I've, I know I, I've been critical in the past and I've been, you know, hey, I don't think uh, he could just step in and play yeah. today and that's why he's not if on the he's, team. If he's good enough, he yep. would be playing. Yep. That's been our stance. Yep. But this, this is different. This is something, this is the NFL trying to end this for all. Yeah. Kind of trying to say, hey, we gave him a shot. Here's the shot. When you didn't really give him a shot, mm -hmm. you didn't really give the guy a legit chance. Yeah. You didn't really give him any notice. You didn't really give him any opportunity. Because now, I don't even know, do you know the teams that are going to show up? Uh, do you do have any idea what teams are going to show up on this little notice? Let's talk about this. Yeah. Teams usually scout players on weekdays. Weekends, they're usually at college football games on a Saturday, scouting college football and players. Recruiting. Yep. What are we doing? What are we doing? Dude, we're halfway through the season. Sense. We're starting to get to playoff push. This does not make any sense at all for a lot of different reasons. It's just uh okay, here we go. Look at this. The teams that have um the teams that have been This is the updated list of teams that are going to appear. Okay. Arizona uh, Cardinals, Dolphins. Huh? No, I'm start uh, I'm starting at the top okay. here. Okay. Arizona Cardinals likely to have a representative at the workout, ESPN reported. Atlanta Falcons. I'm sure that we will have a representative there, Coach Dan Quinn said. Okay. Who likes a better workout than a scout? Nobody. So I'm sure most teams will have representatives there. Baltimore Ravens. John Harbaugh. He didn't know whether the team would have a representative. But Josina Anderson said she reported a team source saying, we will have our guys. Or we have our guys at the quarterback position. Sounds like they're not interested. Okay. Carolina Panthers. Uh uh no, no 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 eric reed i don't give a shit about eric reed we obviously know he's tied to kaepernick what the panthers mm -hmm. want to do what did ron rivera say uh coach ron rivera reported to reporters to gm marty herney when asked about the workout long kaepernick ally eric reed said feels like a pr stunt but he's previously talked to owner david tepper about bringing in kaepernick doesn't sound like they're interested Bengals expected to send a representative to the workout, according to the Cincinnati Inquirer. Bears, Matt Nagy said he wasn't sure. Cleveland Browns, not planning to attend the workout. Cowboys, we will be in attendance, the team source said. Mike Fisher from Sports Illustrated reporting. Denver Broncos, the Broncos will send a representative, likely a pro, pro personnel scout, they told the Denver Post. Hmm. Lions, we as an organization will always do our due diligence. Co Coach Matt Patricia said on Wednesday, I know that GM Bob Quinn and his staff have someone down there to watch, and we'll see where that goes. Texans Bill O'Brien wouldn't comment. Coach Frank Wright of the Colts, such decisions were up to the GM, Chris Ballard, and they hadn't discussed the issue. Chiefs, uh, according to GM Brett Veach and ESPN, I wouldn't be surprised if we sent someone because Brett likes to turn over every stone, we're in a pretty good spot from a quarterback standpoint right now with four on the roster. Sounds like the Chiefs ain't interested. Mm -hmm. ESPN's Josina Anderson for the Chargers. Not sure whether they have a representative. Rams coach Sean McVay. His team wouldn't share scouting plans. Dolphins, we're, we're doing our due diligence on all players. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll have someone out there, Brian, Brian Flores said. Nice. Um, Vikings plan to attend the workout. Patriots, I'm not sure. Bill Belichick said, of course. I heard the Steelers had some interest. Uh, Steelers. What do you got on the Steelers? Nothing. Nothing. Wait. New Orleans, New York, San Francisco. I don't have anything on the Steelers. They're not even listed on here. Dang. How much sense would that make, though, for the, one Steelers of the one to team be there? That's not, one of the one teams that's not listed. Huh. Yeah, that is strange. Big Ben, you know he has he doesn't have much time in the league. He's out obviously for the year. You got Mason Rudolph that, over there. That, that makes sense. That's the issue though. Is Colin Kaepernick willing to a come in the league and be a back out, a backup and sit there behind somebody to develop? And B, has he changed his stance on the anthem? Has he changed his stance on anything? I think these are two things that those are two questions that any GM needs to know. Sure. If you don't earn the starting job, and if we don't feel like you've you're better than uh, Mason Rudolph, are you okay sitting behind Mason Rudolph? Right. Are you okay sitting behind Ben? It sounds like the Pittsburgh Steelers kind of already have their direction. They're going with Mason Rudolph, mm -hmm. but it's not to say Kaepernick can't come in there and challenge for the job. But it's a tough spot. He's old, dude. He's aging. Is a. It's not a guy you're gonna come. In, you're not gonna build a franchise around him. No. You know, it's not. 
like even the Broncos, they're a team that's rebuilding. They need young. They need, you know, start over. You want to keep a couple veteran guys around, Von Miller, cool. But you're not going to keep, you're not going to bring in aging veteran guys it's at a just, position. It's a chess move by the NFL. Right. Yeah. Give him no time to prepare. He, he it's terrible. It. I mean, how, is he still in shape right now? Like, is he, he said big? he's been ready he for three ready, years. I doubt it. Gonna say. I, right. Of course <laughs> he's going to say that, but I doubt it. I mean, dude, you have, so, either way, this just comes out of come, nowhere, randomly, good for him. in November. Mm-hmm. This is the biggest, this is the biggest PR stunt ever, dude. I think Terrible. the NFL got some new people that are helping them clean up this whole drama. Yeah, kind it's of invi- advising them on how to how to get rid of all this bad press. So, as of right now, the workout is still a go. Am I correct on that? Yeah. There's no other news that it has has fallen off or dissipated. It's still a go. Yep. Yep. Mm. Still a go. Okay. Thomas Cervantes, what up, fools? What up, bro? How you doing? Fail beast. Cap took a payout. Lost all his props for folding. Fook that guy. <laughs> I agree, dude. He did take a payout. We, yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, we talked about this a couple months back. He took a payout from the NFL at that time, and that's what Dow was saying. Maybe this was part of that negotiation. Mm-hmm. But if that's the case, I don't think that would have been. They would have given. It. A, it feels like there would have been more notice. But maybe in the negotiations, that hey, we'll notify you on a. Yeah, on we'll a notify you when it works for us. And all of a sudden, they're going to let the news and all the how broadcast the, teams before. It's, well, and all the details of that are never going to reach the light of day. Colin no. Kaepernick's kind of never going to say how much the NFL paid him. Mm-mm. And that's part of the agreement. It's probably a tight-lipped agreement. Hey, everyone shut the hell up. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Morgan, so pissed I'm late AF. Don't worry, bro. You can catch it on demand, guy. Especially if you're on the Patreon, you get it today, bro. Got it. Blake P., do they really expect teams and coaches to show up the day before Sunday games to watch the workout? I know. It seems (laughs) It's ridiculous. ridiculous. Uh, Vitzer, but the owners don't want to bring him in individually because it hurts their brand as well. I can see that side, and that's that's why they don't want to bring him in now because he's not worth it. Why would you bring a guy in that's going to hurt the brand that's going to be a backup quarterback? That's stupid. (laughs) He's not even playing, and he's hurting the brand. Yeah, of course. But if he was good, if he was Lamar Jackson, if he was out here lighting it up, if he was a young, if he was Josh Allen, a young mobile quarterback with a ton of potential, we'd be talking about something totally different. Totally. Because I would def, I would challenge those coaches will do anything, or those uh, GMs will do anything to win. Those owners will do anything to win. Mm-hmm. So if it's that, we're talking about something totally different. But right now, couldn't agree more. I agree. Uh, beer chug money, Thomas Cervantes, give him a uh, symbol. I Three like, sixteen. I feel like I should chug a beer. I think it's a chug a beer. As <laughs> you see right here, I got the Austin three sixteen beer <laughs> chugging T on. He clanked. Oh, let me let me move this out the way. You see, he's got two Steve Weisers clanked together. Dumping him down his chest, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Give me a hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That was a lot of hell yeah. <laughs> Blake P., wow, I'm surprised by the reasonable interest. Uh, from all the teams you're running down, Pena, he's better than bottom half of the QBs in the league. Pa- uh, Bandit, Detroit got effed by the refs against the Fudge Packers. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy. Thomas Cervantes. Hell yeah. There we go. Thanks for the 316, guy. I love that shit. Nice. Love the 316. Everyone, if you were watching the stream, please go click the like button, man. It helps push us out to more people. helps the podcast out, um, as always. And then also, like I mentioned, the Patreon. If you guys are not subscribed to the Patreon, if you want to donate a dollar a month, you can. If you want to donate $100 a month, you can. Any $2, $5, if you want to join the any of the tiers. Mm-hmm. So you can donate whatever you want to the cast monthly, but you can also subscribe to the tiers. If you subscribe to the tiers, $5 tier gets you the same day audio. So if you're a person that listens on iTunes, Spotify, somewhere else other than YouTube, you get the audio same day. Yep. If you're someone that catches on video, maybe you catch a little bit of the live, can't catch the full thing, want to go back and run it back, subscribe to the $10 package, you get the same day audio and same day video. And that's kind of what's going on right now. Uh, as soon as the merch starts dropping and we have some consistency yeah. there, we move into our new building. We're going to change up the Patreon quite a bit. But those are the things that are going now. And a huge shout out to you, patrons, because um, the patrons cut right now are almost paying the bill for uh, our the building. Space. Yep. So that is that is awesome, man. Thank you guys so much. Thanks to guys like Kirby, you know, randomly donating. I don't even know what tier he subscribes. He just subscribed to he giving just, money. He just puts money in there. Just uh, so shout out to you guys, man. Thank you guys for helping grow the channel and helping uh and, and i'm glad we're giving you good content and you're enjoying what the hell we do in here yeah on the weekly because we put a lot of work into it as well so shout out to everybody Ochi told me he just subscribed yesterday who, who was that ochi ochi Ra- oh wait shout what is it ochi. i was gonna say his real name i can't ochi oh yeah <laughs> say it say the full thing oh it's it's actually just ochirabat oh that, there you go yeah i can't say it you can't say it no i don't know why ochirabat i think i oh that's pretty good oh it is i think we're now half mongolian 
<laughs> All right, let's move into a wildly popular segment on the Most Underrated Podcast, and it is called On This Day. On this day, I see clear. On this day November 14th. 14th. 1970, a devastating plane crash with Marshall University. Oh, I remember that. Do you remember this? Yes, of we course. We are. We are the movie Marshall. We are Marshall. Yeah, yeah who was the uh, actor? Was that McConaughey? Matt McConaughey, yeah. Damn, that's Young. too good. Yeah, right? Or he was doing the Buick commercial. So yeah, so on November 14th, 1970, a chartered jet carrying most of the Marshall University team clips a, sta uh, a stand of trees and crashes into a hillside just two miles from the Tri-State Airport in Canova, West Virginia, killing everyone on board. Absolutely everyone. Crazy. We're talking, you know, players. We're talking, you know, part of the staff, coaching staff, defensive coordinators, offensive coordinators. Like, everybody was involved. And then, as you know, how kind of the movie goes or whatever, uh, they get back into, obviously, their hometown and have to rebuild the whole organization. Brought in a new coach, which is, again, in the movie, Matthew McConaughey, um, and had to kind of rebuild everything, you know? So um, a lot of the non-red shirt team, you know, I, I believe it was like, actually, here's here's the detail. So the team's coach, it's doctors, the university athletic director, and 25 team boosters were a part of this accident. Hmm. Crazy, huh? I remember when that, uh, I remember seeing that movie, Come mm -hmm. out, and I never really knew about that story till I saw the movie. Right. Um, it's very interesting because the amount of sports, the amount of flights that we have for sports teams now, it's crazy that this hasn't really happened again. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? I do. do you ever yeah. think about that? Do you ever think about, gosh, man, this this plane carrying this NBA team or this mm -hmm. whoever? What if what if one of those ever went down? It's like crazy you to just wipe lose out the like entire organization. The like, whole. Yeah. Where do you even go from there? Right. Yeah. It says like. It's such a terrible it's thing just, to think about, it, dude. That's but, why it's so big. Like, it right. doesn't happen. And you have more chartered jets and more private jets probably than what you had in the 70s, I would probably argue now, um, with the way sports are and, and the amount of money that's involved. But, yeah, to not see anything like this or of this magnitude happen again is good, but it's it's odd, you know? Very odd. Yeah, I don't... Uh, let's knock on wood, man. Hopefully it's never yeah, happens no doubt. again. But, like you said, the whole... Not the whole, I mean, pretty much the organization, though. You probably, you got coaches, assistant coaches, GMs on there probably on those charters, dude. Yeah. That's nuts. Um, What about the, we got two of them today. Yeah, we have. We, we have dueling. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say it's, uh, this one takes second place by any means, but we have another one that I think is worth uh, uh, bringing up. So November, on this day, November 14th, 2003, if you guys remember where you were. Uh, 2003. Jay-Z. And the Black Album, his eighth studio album, uh, was released on this day uh, through Rockefeller Records, obviously. Um, it was advertised as his final album before retiring, uh, which has also been a recurring theme throughout some of his songs within this album. Uh, but although Jay-Z resumed his recording career uh, in 2006. So, here you go. Dude, Black the Album. Black Album. We talked about this a few episodes ago. I remember, okay, so the Marshall Mathers... Eminem show. This one kicks. The Eminem show yeah. dropped in 2002 in May. May of 2002 until November of 2003, I rocked the Eminem show. Once once this album dropped, November, I kind of went back and forth for the first month because I just still love the Eminem show, dude. I, I just love that album. That's I was on that album heavy, too. Man, yeah. that's one of my favorite Eminem albums. You got my mom to buy it for me. Dude. <laughs> I don't know why she agreed yeah. to do that. Other but. than, like, Without Me and a couple of those commercial hits I, that I skip now, you know, just because, like, they're whatever. Dude, that album just goes. Like, that was the first album M really got. It felt like his production, he started producing and shit. It felt mm -hmm. like he really put the whole package together, that album. The Sing for the Moment sample on that album. The Mosh shit against George Bush. Like, the crazy... That was just a crazy album. So then, I rocked that for a year and a half straight. And then Jay-Z rolls around with the Black Album, dude. And I probably spun this album from November of 03 until sometime in 05. Mm. Just killing it dude this this album was so great because i could go to the club and this is when Lil john and all that crunk shit was starting to hit in 03 04 05 06 that kind of era 
So I could go to the club and hit the lean with it, rock with it shit. I could hit the, the little John and the get low and all the shit that was going on at the club. But I could still throw this onto my car and understand some shit and get, and get my mind right. Right. You know what I mean? Before I was going to class, before I was going to hit the gym, going to a, run a game of ball at the rec, going to hang out with the homies, whatever. I just remember cruising this around in my college town, going to get food, doing whatever, and just... Ding! Just loving it, dude. Just loving it. How did you feel about him retiring at that time? Because, I mean, we know he came back, but at the time, I think, did, were people actually convinced that he was retiring? I was. I was, and I think that's what I why I was so in, in entrenched in the album. This album, and then the documentary, Fade to Black, that came with it. Because there was a uh, tour, dude. there was a documentary. Like, yep. it was pretty convincing. It was... Uh, I think I think he did, I don't I think he did and I don't think he was like oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hoodwink everyone and come back I think at the time that's what he wanted to do he was over it kind of he was just kind of like yeah whatever sick of it and then what when did he come back Kingdom Come 2007 Seven. something like that I uh, know that was six oh six 2006 yeah with Kingdom Come wow. and the crazy right, three years later yeah, I'm retired and I remember the crazy thing with that album man he had uh, like. He enlisted like a different producer for each song, if I'm correct on that. Dude, he had Just Blaze producing on that. He had Kanye. He had and the I thought Neptunes. that album wasn't great. No. I wasn't a fan. He had Kanye. He had the Neptunes. He had Eminem. He had DJ couple Quick on that joint. And the Ninth Wonder, Timberland. Mm-hmm. Dude, uh, Rick Rubin was on there, obviously, as production. So that was a crazy album. And I think that's what made it not maybe as Jay-Z. He was doing something kind of experimental and had so much different production work on that. Another one I wasn't a fan of when he moved. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. He was saying he was on, uh, they were on tour in South South Africa. Yeah. And um, Guru was saying, like, they were mixing it and they were just trying to get it. It was super rushed and they were touring. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So they just couldn't really put together a solid project like they wanted to. Huh. Damn. And he used that as his first, like, out of retirement project. Yeah. I would have just been like, nah, just shelf it. I'm not ready. Like, And that's the same Guru that passed away in 2010, correct? No, no, no. Uh, no, different Guru? Young, young Guru. Okay, Young Guru. There you go. Yeah, gotcha. engineer. I just want to make sure because uh, the original Guru that I remember, Gangstar, right? Yeah. With yeah, DJ yeah. Premier and that whole crew. So, gotcha. Um, so that album, I, th- I don't think was good. What was the next album after that? What did he bounce back with? Uh, Kingdom Come, and then what did he go Because I remember, an- well, the reason, my first thought, though, when you were bringing out all those producers, Magna Carta was another big disappointment for me. Right. I thought that with him, the Samsung, the rollout, the way they tried to roll that out, um, Rick Rubin producing it and all that, I just thought it was a big L for me, too. It kind of overproduced. A little, mi- yeah, little bit of a miss. A, yeah, a little else. bit of a miss, dude. Well, because then he did some stuff, right, with the American Gangster, yeah. uh, November 6th. That was uh, 2007. Um, and then, obviously, the next one that I remember, and I don't know if it was the next one, but the Blueprint 3 Blueprint. was September 8th, uh, 2009. Uh, Conley said Jay-Z lobbied for Cap. What do you think, uh, I guess, you know, just to put a cap on this and kind of tie it all together here, um, what do you think of that? Do you think the Jay-Z signing with the NFL had any... Um, bearing on this this workout and kind of what's what's going on here. Um, yeah. I mean, it could have been, and I think I think Jay Z's probably lobbied for him before, but no, I think I think this was something something fishy that the NFL did that try to help their brand to give somebody a quote unquote chance. I, I I don't know how much Jay Z had to do with this one. I don't think so. That's that's how I feel. I don't know. Cause I don't know if. This isn't exactly a great representation of Jay Z's power. Yeah, if, if Jay Z had anything to do with this one, if Jay Z had something in lobby, hey, I think there'd be more flexibility. Right. I would think. Let me give you a rushed, well, Jay Z's unexpected advising pro day. the NFL right now, though. He's advising them on oh, just how to on get uh, just on halftime and yeah, and just on entertainment, just on stuff. entertainment. I don't, I don't think on so back end business. Well, yeah, but with that comes brand. So maybe he's trying to get their brand up. This is a bad look for the NFL. Yeah, this is a bad. If this I think is, if, I think Cap saying, looks good on this. Move, yeah. this is, is this it? is bad. This dude, I've been against not against Colin Kaepernick, but I've been saying, hey man, he's not. What Conley just said, he's not worth the baggage. A backup quarterback isn't worth this kind of baggage. That's what I've been saying the entire time. If he was, if he was a Lamar level, not backup Lamar Jackson. If he was Lamar Jackson, he's worth the baggage. Do whatever, do whatever. Cheat code, but Lamar. he's not. Yeah, he's not but worth the baggage. What dog. I'm saying is, it gives them an out though. Like, so they they clear, they wash their hands of this whole cap thing. If he goes to the, the workout and then doesn't perform, they have an out saying, "Hey, we gave him a shot." He didn't. He I didn't think they. That's. I think that's what we were saying. Like they the do, NFL but, wins either way. So they're good. Yeah. But but that's not. Uh, but that's not really lobbying for cap. I don't think. You're saying. No, I'm saying the opposite. He's oh, saying he's, he's saying Jay Z's partnered with the NFL's NFL trying to trying to clean the NFL's. 
thing. He's not they worried about cap. Some brand deals or something. He's saying the opposite of what the chat said ah, that Jay Z gotcha. lobbied to cap. Gotcha. 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 So that's very interesting too. Yeah. Just to think about it from that perspective is like, well, that's what it looks like because <laughs> it looks like the NFL is like basically saying, hey, here, all right, here, come work out and get get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. to a hey, person like, like this, come right. on. But to a person like me, I look at it like I don't look at it as the NFL looks better. I think the NFL looks worse. But am I going to stop watching? No. Am I going to no. stop betting? No. Am I going to stop fantasy? No. Am I going to stop DraftKings? No. So what are you going to do? Shoot yourself. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Uh, let me catch up on the chat. That'll be our clickbait for the day, boycotting NFL. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no more heaters. <laughs> Armando, he can back up Lamar Jackson. Why not? Do we, uh, do we know he's not mobile? Are coaches willing to change their system to fit the player? I think too much ego with coaches, kind of. I would agree and disagree there. Some, mm -hmm. yes. And the Ravens, no. They've changed everything for Lamar Jackson. I don't yeah. think there's any ego with John Harbaugh and that coaching staff there. They did everything they could to build that team around Lamar and his skill set. Just like they're doing in Arizona with Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury. Mm -hmm. They brought in Cliff Kingsbury, and then you are going to draft Kyler Murray number one. They're going to, you know... Make it all work. Right. Give them the best possible situation. So, uh, let's see. It's all show. Totally agree. Miss the old Jay-Z. Rock La Familia. Damn, that's, yeah. That's, that's the old Jay-Z. You don't like Black Album Jay-Z? Come on. Or you don't like today's Jay-Z. You do like Black Album Jay-Z. Yeah. He doesn't, like, even, he doesn't like 444 Jay-Z. Uh, my boy Choner, dude. He's a big reasonable doubt jay-z is like, he? he loves oh, wow. old, that old jay-z which to me i'm okay on it i'm like yeah it's cool but i don't i think it gets a little bit overhyped yeah it's like I think that's people, like 96 reasonable but, doubt 96, but the people that love it love it dude wow. love it and that's where he's got Tony's the hat on dude yeah. and the cigar yeah, yeah, no, oh man that uh, is old jeff kirby the performance year to year of nfl qbs is so dependent on so many things coaching schedule weapons around him etc cap had one good season even tebow had very had one very good season I look at him season. now i think that's a great comment it is a great comment it was a natural uh, i just gave you the gunshot because it was natural but yeah. the comment was good and i just realized we weren't in the youtube comments but nice job kirby yeah dude all We're, those all those late drives with tebow back in the day i remember those so well because i used to go watch those bronco games when tebow was playing that year with some friends mm -hmm. and every time i went and took a dump um, <laughs> Tebow would go on a run, so that was the rule. So when I every time I went to their house, I had at every the time end, you went on a run, he went on a run. I had to go, I had to go make my run real nice. quick. You know what I mean? But yeah. that was the rule. So I remember that season very, very well because every time I went to the bathroom, Tebow went on a run as I was running. Wow, you now, know that, uh, that's what you have to add to the show today. Yeah, <laughs> my, my, <laughs> it was a memory. <laughs> Sorry, my, my cousins take the credit for uh, Tebow's start. Yeah, they were the Billboard guys. Oh, oh wow. They put they put the start Tebow up on the billboard and they no had that way. whole campaign. Yeah, Dang. they they paid their own money no, to get that going. That billboard. Oh, they own it. Of course that they do. The, Your family owns everything in this town, <laughs> Joel. So we got a building. I was outside their store. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really surprised our building had nothing to do with your family. Yeah, because you guys do. You guys just remind me of Italians. I tried, man. It's just like you guys own half of everything around here. <laughs> Ridiculous. All right, let's. Um, as much I love Jay, we got to move on, and uh, let's move on to the. Um, Let's do the fantasy stuff first. Let's do fantasy, and we'll jump into stardom, sit em, or uh, heaters. Okay. So, yeah, let's do a little, little stardom, sit them here. Again, these are, if you need some fantasy help, these are some deep, not necessarily deep sleepers, but these are some people that should be, that are hopefully available on your waiver wire, some people you can pick up. If you got an injury, you got some players on a buy. You're looking for somebody. You're looking for some advice. Maybe you think you've already got it figured out. Here's what I'll tell you. Put your phone down and listen. I'll tell you what you got figured out. Plug in the guys I tell you to plug in, and you come back here on Monday and let me know what results you get. Mm -hmm. All right. Start. Uh, what's your quarterback? Who are you plugging in this week? You know, this guy's still available for uh, for good reason, just coming off of his major health scare with mononucleus, I mm -hmm. think is how you say it. Yep. <laughs> mononucleosis. Nucleosis. Oh, I was way off. I don't think I'm correct either. Go ahead. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, Sam Darnold. Let's go ahead and start him today. I, I like love the, I love the matchup against Washington this week. Um, so he's matched his season high with 23 fantasy points against the Giants in Week 10. Um, dude, he should have a chance for another productive week in Washington. They are, in fact, uh, starting um, the Ohio guy. What's his name uh, Haskins Dwayne Haskins they're yes. starting Haskins Ohio this State, week the yeah Ohio sorry the Ohio State guy um so they the Redskins haven't allowed uh <clears throat> the quarterbacks to score more than 19 fantasy points in four games in a row but 
you know, if like I said, if you need somebody, you got some big buys this week. Uh, we know some big teams are out this week. Seattle being one of them. Um, you know, Sam Darnold's not a bad and not a bad guy to get you eighteen to twenty. Here's what I'll say too in the chat. Uh, let me know if you guys what just happened here. Oh, I was like, what's going on? Uh, let me know in the chat if you guys um, have any fantasy questions. Do you have any stardom sit Do you have anything in there? What? Conley just said, not inviting Dow to the crib anymore. Why? <laughs> because I took dumps at the crib to get Tebow, ah, I got you. To get Tebow inspired. Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Let me, uh, yeah. So if you guys have any fantasy questions or any uh, things you want to answer to, maybe some stardom sit just leave them in the chat, and we'll get to them really um, quickly after this segment. My start's Kyle Allen, dude. I mm-hmm. like Kyle, Kyle Allen against Atlanta this week. I know we just saw what Atlanta did to Drew Brees. Um, was that off of a bye? Was Atlanta coming off a bye that week? Yes. I think that I think that's a little bit of a uh, – I think what we've seen from Atlanta is more what they are, not what we saw last week. I think Kyle Allen should roll in there and have some decent success. Mm-hmm. He um, – wasn't able to lead them to a win against Green Bay last week, but I thought he played well. He topped 300 yards, first time in his career last week. Mm-hmm. Atlanta's fifth in fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position. Fifth worst, sorry. So I like Kyle Allen this week. Nice. Go ahead. Uh, who I'm sitting, I'm not going to take yours. We talked a little bit about this, and we agreed on that, so I'm yep. going to keep that one for you. Um, dude, this week, I've got to sit uh, Mr. Carson Wentz. We know, oh. we know that New England goes to your best player. And they know how to obviously stop yep. the best player. Yep. Carson Wentz is the best player on that team. Everybody, there are some arguably some great you know players on that team. Deshaun Watson, or not Deshaun Watson, sorry, uh, Deshaun Jackson. Uh, you got Alshon Jeffrey, but they have been injury plagued. Carson Wentz is the best player on that team, and New uh, New England is going to shut him down, no doubt. I'm going to say Kyler Murray at San Francisco. That's kind of a no-brainer for me. Okay. Uh, San Francisco coming off of a loss. They're going to be very hungry. I think that D is going to yeah. be pretty pissed off, especially led by Sherman over there. Here's what I uh, – my real one, Kirk Cousins. Yes. Kirk Cousins against Denver. Dude. That's the one. Denver uh, – now, Kirk Cousins has been on a hot streak. He's been a top-five fantasy option under center the past five weeks. But Denver has quietly been a brutal matchup for fantasy quarterbacks. Being only two teams have surrendered fewer fantasy points to the quarterback position than Denver. Mm -hmm. I know Denver doesn't look like a great team, but stay away from them if you have the quarterback playing against Denver. So I'm sitting Kirk Cousins this week. Running backs. Running backs for me today. um, You know, I'm not going to take yours as well because we kind of agreed with that. Running back is tough this week. We can kind of brainstorm a few. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, there's a few to jump around with. We talked about Brian Hill. I think that's the number one guy, but everyone's picked him up. Yeah. He's not really available. The point of this segment is to try to give you some guys that are available, mm-hmm. somebody that you can go grab. Brian Hill was a great waiver wire ad this week. Huge. Uh, with Ido Smith being on IR, Devontae Freeman going down with a foot injury. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a huge week for Brian Hill. ton of carries, big workload against Carolina, but he's probably rostered. If yeah. he's not, go get Brian Hill and uh, let me know what league you're playing in because I like to get some money. Yeah. Um, so this is a guy that you can't necessarily pick up, but this is a guy that you have not You've just been sitting week over week over week. But he actually got some momentum against a very, very tough D. So to this week, I'm starting Joe Mixon for sure. Nice. You look at him, dude, against week 10 against Baltimore with 151 total yards. The crazy thing about Mixon this year is, dude, he's yet to score uh, on the ground this year. So he's had a couple receiving touchdowns, but he has not scored on the ground. Dude, I see that completely changing. Plus, Giovanni Bernard is hurt with the knee. So you're talking a lot of dependencies on Mixon this week and a lot of pressures, but he's getting a lot of carries. I see him getting his first on the ground TD this week. I'm going to go with Devin Singletary out of Buffalo at Miami. I think Singletary last week, he kind of disappointed in a favorable matchup with Cleveland. I loaded him up in a bunch of DraftKings and got eaten alive. He had 50 yards on 11 carries. Uh, Actually it was 11 total touches. Terrible, but the gap between him and Frank Gore is growing. You're starting to see that. You're starting to see him separate. He's getting a lot more touches than Frank Gore. And this week's matchup is almost as good as last week's as Buffalo takes on Miami. I like Devin Singletary this week. Who are you sitting at running back, Dow? Ah, sitting this week. Uh, there's a couple different ones. I did want to say an honorable mention I like uh, as starting. Uh, Na, uh, is it Naheem Hines? Naheem Hines, yeah. You know how to say his first name. But, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But he's a nice honorable mention. He's available in a lot of leagues. Um, what you're seeing is Jordan Wilkins, which is uh, could be out with the ankle for the Colts. So it'll be um, him and Mac. Having Mac, a little bit of dual uh, dual threat here. That he is gets not, the passing down work, too. You got it. He yeah. gets more passing than, obviously, Mac. This is not a, a bad guy to start as a flex this yeah, week. Yeah, he, he, so. can, he can steal some touches in the red zone. So, yeah, I can definitely see that, man. Um, outside of that, who I really, really want to sit this week is... Um, let's go with Mr. David Johnson. 
Yeah. And this is straight matchup against San Francisco. Dude, I think they are coming off a bad loss. Um, you're going to see those guys play out super, super heavy. Um, again, they have a lot of their uh, starters back on the offensive side, which don't help this. Uh, but I just think, um, I just don't like what David Johnson's doing over there. And, and the matchup is absolutely horrible. Um, I think he only had five carries for two yards against Tampa Bay. Uh, and then one catch for eight yards. Like, something's going on over there. And um, I don't like David Johnson. Jordan Howard for me, Philadelphia versus New England. We talked about it. You talk, uh, you mentioned how bad they are against quarterbacks or how tough they are to play. If you're a quarterback, running backs is worse, dude. They are the fewest fantasy points allowed of any rushing defense this year. New England Patriots. They haven't even given. Uh, they've given up less than 100 yards rushing per game. They haven't even allowed a 100 yard 100 yard rusher. Yep. Jordan Howard's not going to be that guy. I think of anything, Miles Sanders, you might get more of that work out of the backfield. They flip it to him out of there. I'd agree. To try to loosen up the defense a little bit, but I don't think Jordan Howard's going to have much success against New England off a of bye. That Miles Sanders is going to be your Tariq Cohen out there. There you go. On, on the backside. I like that. So Wide receiver. Oh, go ahead. Wide receiver. Yeah. yeah no, I'm ready. Uh, let's go with Debo Samuel. Man, I really like this. Uh, and, and the reason I like this is the matchup is great against Arizona, number one. Mm-hmm. Number two, you're looking at Samuel Dog could be the number one receiver possible. Uh, because Emmanuel Sanders, dude, with the ribs, you know, from last game is, mm-hmm. is possibly out. So um, he played well uh, when Sanders went out. Um, I just think, you know, he, he's going to have multiple targets, you know, probably anywhere from 12 to 18, depending on what scheme San Francisco runs. This is a great play this week. I'm going to give you two. I'm going to give you three. I like it. Curtis Samuel against Atlanta. I love him this week, but I'm not sure he's really available in a ton um, so if he is Curtis Samuel, my top play there, Carolina second, Terry McLaurin. I yeah. think a lot of people got off of him and dropped him cause he started out or he, uh, had a few weeks where he blazed a little bit and then yeah. he's had a little bit of a downslide. He's still the off- number one offensive weapon over there in Washington. No doubt. Offensive rookie of the year candidate for sure. He should pick up right where he left off against the Jets. 26th pass ranked defense. I think it's going to be a good week for him. If Terry McLaurin is not available, sleeper, Auden Tate for the Cincinnati, uh, Cincinnati Bengals against Oakland this week. Mm-hmm. Oakland's passing, uh, Oakland's secondary is pretty leaky. Auden Tate's a guy that's surprised. Still no A.J. Green over there. I know the quarterback position's shaky. But that's why I would say Auden Tate's a guy that might be available more than Curtis Samuel or Terry McLaurin. Those are my top two, but if they're not there, go go grab Auden Aud- Tate. I think he can have a nice week against uh, Oakland. I like it. And if you're also doing some DraftKings tourneys, that kind of stuff this week, I've got another deep sleeper that might be an option. You've got Russell Gage over there in uh, Atlanta. And yes, against dude, a Carolina team. Yeah, with the um, injury to um, Austin Hooper, yeah. dude, out with the love knee. Um, and it looks like it's going to be a month or longer for Austin Hooper. So Gage has obviously stepped up as a reliable target now that you have Matt Ryan. Sanu was obviously traded. So in two games, Gage has 11 catches for 81 yards and 14 targets. So um, again, this is deep, but this is somebody to kind of look at. Keep your eyes on. Uh, sitting down at wide receiver position. Dude, this is the hardest thing for me. Let me go first on this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. This is the hardest one for me because of what he did. He had three tutties last week. You got to sit Christian Kirk this week. Yeah. And that's, again, it's just because of lineup. Going against that San Francisco secondary, is it does not play well. It does not look good. The amount of targets, the amount of TDs, the amount of receptions. Dude, I've got him in two leagues, and I'm sitting him. This is super, super hard, but the matchup is not great. So, got to sit Christian Kirk this week. Hard. Do I got to beat the drum for Diggs again? <laughs> Play, <laughs> playing Denver? Yeah, <laughs> Stephon no. Diggs every single week. This is obvious. This is a guy you drafted in the top f- three, four, five rounds, and, dude, he's done nothing. Mm-hmm. Adam Thielen's injured. It's just not good. So, yeah, Christian Kirk to Stephon Diggs. Those are the ones for me. Doesn't look good this week. Uh, tight ends. Tight ends. I've got a couple different ones. We'll be starting here. But I want to bring somebody back from the dead. Who? Jared Cook. Oh, wow. This guy has been injured, and he has been plagued. But not only is he not injured anymore, he's back. Guess what? Drew Brees is back. The problem that I have with this uh, that I'm a little skeptical is Drew Brees has a little bit of an injury that we kind of talked about. So him and Sanders got the rib injuries, um, but I like Jared Cook, dude. I think this is a reliable target. I, I, You know, you're seeing a lot of pressure on Brees, dude, and if he's not getting this ball out fast enough, they will lose. Um, And Tampa Bay's got some good pressure uh, that they're going to bring. I think they ended up winning by 12 uh, or 14 the last time they played, week five or six, whatever it was. But Jared Cook is going to get some targets. Gets, I like him. I'm going to go with a guy who didn't look great filling in for George Kittle last week, but I think he has a lot better week this week because I think the matchup is better, and that's Ross Dwelly. 
Did you see him Monday night against Seattle? He filled in yeah. for George Kittle. He had a couple catches, three catches, 24 yards, nothing crazy. But I think he's in a dream matchup against Arizona. Arizona's been the worst team covering mm -hmm. the tight end. I think San Francisco uses the tight end quite a bit. I think another week of practice under his belt as the starter, getting rapport with Jimmy Garoppolo, Ross Dwelly, a guy I love not only in uh, fantasy this week, but DraftKings as well. Very cheap at the tight end position if you need to fill that. Ross Dwelly, San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Who are you sitting? Uh, sitting uh, this week, I've got a couple different ones, but I think the biggest one for me, again, I don't like matchup on this one against a Baltimore who's tough against tight ends, Darren Fells. I've got to sit Darren mm. Fells this week. Um, potential starter in all leagues, right, uh, moving forward. But Eesh. this, this dude, this production, about his production this week against the Raven, um, I don't like. But that, that being said, Baltimore did allow Tyler Eifert to score in Week 10, uh, but he's only the second tight end to score against the Raven Ravens the whole year. Okay? Mm. So, I don't like Darren Fells this week, man. I just don't, I just don't see it. Um, I don't know. I, that's one of my heaters. I, uh, yeah? I like the Texans this week. I'm not sure I love Fells, but I like the Texans I like the Texans week. this week as well. So, I don't like Fells, though. Interesting. Especially with that, dude. Like I said, the Ravens have only allowed two touchdowns for tight ends the whole entire season. It's not. It does not bode well. Um, Jeez, man. I really struggled with tight ends this week. I think it's O.J. Howard or Zach Ertz. Mm -hmm. Ertz, obviously, we talked about it playing the Patriots. That's tough. But somebody's got to succeed, right? You don't get to sit every single guy playing the Patriots. It's tough. Right. Who to know? Because someone's going to have a little success. Someone's sure. going to do something. You can only uh, neutralize so many people. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just hard to figure out who that is against New England. You never know who they're trying to attack. OJ Howard uh, against New Orleans. It's also another one I'm not not a fan of there. Um, same thing. I like Tampa and the side. I just don't like OJ Howard. Kind of like how you're feeling about your tight end situation. Yeah. Uh, let's go to the chat, man. Let's um, let me look at a few of these. See if there's anything in here. Uh, dang, Dow, I have Washington as a defense to pick up this week. Look at you, Dow, pooping all over. <laughs> pooping over Washington D. Yeah, I don't know about that. Let's see. Kirby, here's my fantasy heater from the guy in 10th in the most underrated league. <laughs> Hunter Renfro, wide receiver of the Raiders, leads the team in targets the last three weeks. He does. Since he has given up the most. Look at it, he's giving out a little sneaky DraftKings advice. Kirby, be quiet. You're killing my DraftKings. Come on, Kirby. I was gonna I had Renfro. I had Renfro as a nice sleeper on DraftKings, a nice salary saving wide receiver. Yeah. Overperforming the salary. Why don't you tell him to curb his enthusiasm over there? Nice, nice one, Dal. Great. Got him. <laughs> Great job. Uh, plus we know Renfro has more TDs this season than OB F and J. J. Eesh. <laughs> That's about that last cast, yeah. Hypervenom. Jackson is done for the season. He's which which I know. No, he's what talking Jackson? about Deshaun Jackson. I oh, know he's right. done. I just threw his name out there that they have talent on their roster. Oh, okay. But yeah, of course yeah, Deshaun on, Jackson's gone. He's on IR. Come on. Uh, Richard will be up. Raiders will rest Jacobs late. Huh. Wow, this is That's this a hot is, take. This is Brian. This is this is a Raiders rest, guy. Ja I don't ever rest Jacobs. I know they kind of need to. He's getting banged up. But yeah, he is. SWC, what up? Bro? How you doing? Coming what up, through. bro? Socratic mind, Dow. Get the get the uh, symbol ready. To ready. Go. There you go, Dow. Socratic mind, five dollars. Reasonable doubt blows the black album out of the water. Wow. But hey, everything is relative. I'm a cat guy, Dow. Oh, <laughs> let's oh, go. You're a cat guy. Not wow. Good. Wait. Were we talking about that on air today? No. No, we talked about it uh, a cast or two, just about like being no, a dog guy and a cat guy. We were talking guy. about it before you said it. Oh. A cat guy. Yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. Friends or something. That's what I was asking. Were we? Was that on the show? No. Oh, I was like, damn, were yeah. we live? And I didn't know we were live. Dude, okay. So yeah. before the show, we were talking. Dow said, if anyone in this room has a cat, yeah, we, we got to go. I think I'm out. And he, yeah, I'm out. And he was talking about us. Can't be here. friends. So that's funny. You just said that. Socratic, thank you for the $5, bro. I appreciate you, man. That's funny. I was like, wait, we're on air? <laughs> Valencia, I like Gallup to go off for Dallas yes. with Slayton lining with Cooper all game. Dude, uh, hey, who, who said that, Brian? Brian, I am right there with you, dude. I have Gallup starting in two of my leagues uh, because of him. Uh, dude, him and Dak have a hell of a chemistry all of a sudden, and I think uh, Kellen Moore trusts Gallup, and I think this is I think this is great, dude. So this is only going to get better. I'm with I just you. got a thing that says video output low, Jalal, on my thing, my stream health. It showed uh, it went red, but I don't know. That means mm, anything. Let's see. Um, let's see. Chris J, what up, bro? How you doing? It's good family. 
Connor, put me up on some game, fellas. Is Emmanuel Sanders playing this week? If he is, would you start Emmanuel Sanders or Curtis Samuel? Mm. Dude, I would start Curtis Samuel just I because I don't know what Emmanuel Sanders' health is looking like. Mm -hmm. I know we saw Garoppolo struggle when Sanders went out. Yeah. Without that number one option, it's tough. So I think Sanders might play. But, dude, a rib injury? Is that what he has? Yes. That's going to be... That's tough. Dude, he's going to be winded, like everything. Like his catching, his mo mobility is off. Uh, I would go Curtis Samuel. If you can somehow get Debo. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't want to. Dude, it's so early. I know. It's early. Tweet me. Tweet me on Sunday. Yeah, keep an eye out. Connor, and let me give you some. Dude, because Emmanuel Sanders, the, Arizona's terrible. Is that what they're playing? What the hell are they playing? Let me look at this. Oh, damn it. Losing my mind here. Lost my mama. Lost my mind. Did you see anything on the stream? A Carolina's playing Atlanta. Yeah, it's good. It's good enough. No, I'm talking about San Francisco. Oh, yeah, they're playing the Cardinals. I'm yeah, right. the Cardinals, okay. yeah. Yeah, dude, the Cardinals are bad in the secondary. Even if Sanders is banged up. Ah, that's tough. Yeah, let me ask me on Sunday. <laughs> Dirty DJ, live cast. What up, bro? What up? I'm not supporting my Cowboys anymore until Garrett gets fired. Tommy H, <laughs> he does need to. You think he needs to get fired? Uh, well, he's had a lot of shots there. I don't he know has. if we'll, Kellen Moore is the uh, quarterback whisperer, guy. Just That's what they say. Keep the faith. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Start, sit, Gurley versus Kirk. I would go, uh, oos. Gosh, dude. Gurley? Uh, Gurley's not been good, but I know you said to sit Kirk. Kirk is my is my sit for receivers. That's a, ooh, that's a tough one. So, obviously, that's going to be a flex position that you're looking for to fill there. Um I'm sitting Gurley, dude. Uh, I'd rather start Christian Kirk. I'd yeah. rather start Christian Kirk. I haven't seen anything out of Gurley. I haven't seen anything out of Gurley, and they're playing the Bears. Yeah, I'm with you. If, if, if Gurley gets ten points, I think you'd be. I think you'd be pretty lucky to get ten points this week. I'd go Kirk Renzo. Yeah. Uh, curb my enthusiasm. Haven't heard that burn from someone under fifty years old since like 2008. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh shit. Oh, Kirby, that's Valencia. awesome. So Tate and Mixon, you guys picked. Are you saying my Raiders get upset? I feel a bet coming, LOL. Hey, you hold that bet until you get to our damn heaters, it's Brian. Coming. It's coming. We're about to get into it right it's now. It's coming. Uh, should I start Ingram or Andrews at tight end this week? Oh, dude. Or yeah, I think you meant Andrews, right? Yeah. Oh, Andrews for sure. Mark Andrews, hopefully. Yeah. Andrews for sure, dude. Yeah. Uh, fail Beast. An Aussie Rules update. Cooper Cronk has joined the Greater Western Sydney Giants. No shit. <laughs> Cooper Cronk. Update. I've been waiting for this. What about Cooper Cup? Yeah. How about that? Is Cooper Cup going to come alive this week? Because he had a goose egg last week. Dude, you don't know that. Can uh, you answer that for me, Fail Beast? That's funny. Cooper Cronk. <laughs> Cooper Cronk. <laughs> All right. Let's not waste any more time. Uh, let's jump into the NFL heaters brought to you by SeatGeek. This week and every week, you can save yourself $20 off your first purchase using the SeatGeek app or the SeatGeek website by using the code underrated. Go there, your first purchase, you can save yourself 20 bucks on any event tickets, concert tickets, anything you're trying to do, man. Take your daddy on a uh, lady on a date night, go out with the fellas, whatever you want to do, save yourself 20 bucks on the SeatGeek app and at SeatGeek.com. Nice. Come <laughs> on the bitch shots. All right, Em. There's, there we go. This is my heater. I dare you to hit it. Hot shit. Hot shit. Too hot. All right, heaters, week 11. Last week, your boy went 5-0. and Your boy is me, by the way, if you guys are new to the show. Most <laughs> underrated podcast heaters. I'm a, I'm at 35-15 and 15 on the year. That's a 70% clip. We're Love basically it. printing money. If you guys are not taking these picks and taking them to the house and paying your mortgage, you're wasting your time. Why are you even watching the show? All right, anyway. Dow Palantonio, 29 and 21, had a little bit of a slide last week I going did. two and three. Yeah. Just barely, barely under profitable. Only lost one. You know, we're back on the wagon this week. Getting back on the wagon. Don't I worry. like it. I like it. Start me off with your first one. Uh, first one. I, going? I love this one. Uh, Matthew Stafford broken back, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on over there. I do not see him playing, especially against a hard uh, uh, Cowboys D. Uh, so we're looking at uh, what's his name? Is his name Jeff? Uh, Driscoll. Driscoll. 
Uh, I never heard of her. Okay, so never he, heard of her. He's actually doing the quarterback uh, position this week. Uh, I love the Cowboys minus three and a half against the Detroit Lions. Um, again, uh, this seems too easy. I'm a little worried about that, but this would be my feet up bet this week. Yeah, it seems a little easy to me too. I know, especially if we do. We know for sure Stafford's not playing. We don't know that for sure, but okay. uh, with the back injuries as tough as that is, um, number one, he's not going to be even close to 100 percent if he does play. He's not going to have any mobility in the pocket and you know that the Dallas pass, ru- uh, pass rush is pretty damn stout okay um, I don't know when uh, what's his name coming back so Sean Lee's out there uh, what's the young guy that's taken kind of Sean Lee's uh, Leighton Van Der Esch. when's he coming back Leighton he's out he's back this week is he back yes, this week he'll be back I saw it on the that's report. sick yep. watch out this is too easy feet up bet minus three and a half Cowboys feet up like a paraplegia got him for Dow Palantonio all right man my um my first one here Jeez, we were back and forth on this. I'm going to go with the Bucks plus five and a half. Are mm. you taking the Saints minus five and a half? God, what are you doing? I, I like that Bucks, and historically it says, uh, you know, they, they covered the spread the Saints did the last time. I'm a little worried about Breeze's uh, rib, rib injury. Mm-hmm. So, I, so I think I'm going to go with plus five and a half as well on the Bucks. All right, Dow's going with the Bucks. Yep. Plus five and a half. He's a little bit worried about the Breeze situation. Rib injury. I don't think it's going to be as breezy. I was heavy on the Bucks last week, so I'm a little nervous taking them back to back. Plus, this is going against my rule. I told you guys last week with Aaron Rodgers, I love to take elite quarterbacks off a loss. Mm-hmm. This is going against that. Would you consider Drew Brees an elite quarterback? Absolutely. He did lose last week, right? He's elite, though. So this is going against what I uh, my normal thing. But here's the reason I would say that. The rib injury. Yeah. I think the rib injury... Is just a little bit different for me. I think the Bucks could treat this game as their Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I mean, meanwhile, the Saints, they already beat the shit out of Tampa earlier this week as high road or earlier this year as high road favorites. They have a battle with the Panthers next week on the horizon. I mentioned before I love betting off elite quarterbacks off a loss, but it doesn't apply with the rib injury. Plus, the Saints are a large road favorite. How are they a favorite? Bucks are five and a half at home. I think the Lions started at six or six and a half. Love the Bucks this week. Me and you are on the same. Yep. We're both going on the Bucks plus five and a half. Give me your next one, Dow. All right, my next one. I'm going to take uh, another dog here. Uh, we're going to go Jets plus one and a half Whoa. against the Skins uh, this week. Like I said, uh, Sam Darnold, I think, is going to get you that 18 to 20 points. Um, we kind of saw uh, some good things from the Jets last week. Again, that was going from a broken Giants situation. I don't want to get too far into it, but um, I just don't like the Redskins. I don't like anything about it, um, especially with Dwayne Haskins at the helm. We saw what he did his first game that he started. It was atrocious. He was a turnover king, I think, turning over if not two, two if not three. Um, so that's really bad. Um, I like the Jets. Uh, what do really you have the, the spread at? Uh, one and a half. Uh, okay, so I have it. I'm taking, we're going, we're going. Um, Opposites. We're going head to head here. Okay. We're going head to head on this one. Might as well throw a five. Baby, wake the fuck up. Five. Here we are five bucks on it. Me and you. Okay. Head to head. I'm going with. Uh, I'm going with the Bears. I'm going the opposite of Dal Palantonio. A week ago, everyone was so down on the Jets. They were willing to lay the three points as the road favorite against the Giants. Now all of a sudden, they see the Jets beat the crap out of a crappy team and fo- that they foolishly bet on. And now everyone else wants to turn around and change their wager on the Jets to win outright on the road. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> including Dal Palantone, including you are the public. I am the public. You're this the public week on this one. Yeah, that's fine. The public is very stupid. I don't want to call you stupid. Right. You're not stupid, but the public is stupid. Try not to. You're be. just making a stupid pick here. Fair enough. The the uh, we have five on it plus plus one and a half, dude. I think they win the game. I think they win the game by a field goal. I don't even think we need the points, but. You go ahead and take your bet. I'll take your money, just like I did yesterday at the outlets. You'll see in the vlog. Here's the, here's the research a lot of people fail to do. A lot of people fail to realize the misconception that was created, this great value, is that the Redskins are a bad team. The Redskins are a bad team, but they're getting two people back on their offensive line. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if people have done the research. They've been missing their center, and they've been missing their guard right. for the past few weeks, that, for the past month. That's why I haven't looked good. If they're getting them back this week, should be a lot better for the Redskins. I like the Redskins minus one and a half.
this week. What's your next one, Dow? All right. Uh, the next one, I would say. We're going straight head to head on that one. I like it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, this is a big one, and I just think the Bengals are beat. So you got Ooh. you got Raiders at minus 10 and a half. So Mr. Brian Valencia, I will take the Raiders on this. I will take the spread. And obviously, the Raiders are going to win this outright. Um, I think they win by maybe even 14 Ooh. or more. Um, so a lot of points going to be put up on this one. So if you have anybody playing in the Raiders and or Bengals, there's going to be a lot of scores in this. So uh, Raiders, minus 10 and a half this week. Dow Palantonio going heavy on the Oakland Raiders. Yeah. All right. I'm going to uh, I'm gonna stay away from that one. Let me put you down here. Dow Palantonio. 10 and a half. Raiders. Got you're it. in. Uh, I'm going to go with mine. Gosh. Let's do Buffalo. Buffalo against Miami. I stayed away from this one. The terrible Miami Dolphins. Yeah. Buffalo spreads at five and a half. I'm going to take Buffalo minus the five and a half. I really like this one. It's time for the Dolphins to get back to losing in glorious fashion. (laughs) The way they've been doing it. They have zero healthy talent on their roster. They need to lose games anyway. We know they need to lose games anyway. They've already Mm -hmm. lost out on Tua to the Bengals. Now, if they keep winning, they're going to risk losing out on Joe Burrow. Yeah. You know, um, the best Justin Herbert ever. Yeah. out of Oregon. They're going to risk missing out on some guys. They need to lose. I think the Bills should be able to win this one easy, dude. Easy. Um, I'm going to say the Bills cover this spread. Not only are, um, win the game and cover the spread, 24 to 6. Easy cover. Bills minus 5.5. Let's do it. I like it. What's your next one, Dell? All right, my final one. This is number five. Yes. Um, I do. Th- this is a tough one for me. Uh, but I I think the Panthers win this, but I don't think they can cover the spread. So uh, at the spread right now, I have the Falcons at plus five and a half against the Panthers. You know McCaffrey's going to get his. Uh, like you said, Curtis Samuel, I'm a little worried about him and his touches this week. DJ Moore should be able to get you know what he needs uh, with that Falcons secondary uh, trouble that they have back there. But... I think they're just going to try to play a divisional spoiler here Um, on the road. Consecutive weeks. They have a little momentum. Uh, Matt Ryan's back. I don't know if he's at full health, but uh, I think the Panthers win this. I just don't think they cover the spread. So Falcons plus five and a half. There you go. Dow Palantonio. I got, oh, it's five and a half. Yep. There it is. Okay. I got you down. Fifth one. You're locked, Dow. Locked. Uh, This is going to be, I like this one. This is my, this is my lock of the year. No, my lock of the month. Oh, let's just say. I like this one a lot. This is how... No, I feel... You know how I felt about the Bucks um, last week? Yes. This is how I feel about this uh, this team this week. Okay. I'm going to take the Texans against the Ravens. Wow. I think the Texans win outright, but they're plus four and a half. Huh. I'm going to take the Texans. Do I have them? Let me see. I'm going to take the Texans at four and a half over the Ravens, dude. And the Ravens, I know, they've been looking good. Everything's been going on. But these ha- this has some elements that kind of make this game very, very important to me. And uh, Ravens are coming off victories versus the Patriots, the Bengals. And they have to battle the Rams on national TV next week. I think maybe this is the spot where they overlook it a little bit. Hmm. Texans not that good. Maybe being overhyped a little bit. I think the Ravens are personally are being overhyped. I think the Ravens are good. Yeah. I'm not saying, you know, I think the Ravens are a good team, but I think they're a little bit overhyped. Uh, the public, as you might have suspected, pounding the Ravens. Are they? All on the Ravens. Driven the line down. They, they're watching ESPN, because I don't know if you watch ESPN, you just see the nothing but the Ravens all on TV oh, yeah. all the time. It's, it's Ravens TV over there. So, <laughs> I'm serious. That's why, you know how I love betting against the public. Right. That's why I like this one, dude. Let's look at the Ravens. They're seven and two, but they got blown out by the Browns at home. They got destroyed by the Chiefs in Arrowhead before some garbage scores uh, in regulation that made it seem closer than it was. But if you go back and watch the game, the Ravens didn't play that well there. But turn around. Speaking of Arrowhead, who who beat the Chiefs in Arrowhead with Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill, the Texans? Texans. They were so check that out. I don't know. I just kind of look at. Like games, similar games. I see this one is similar, and I'm gonna go with the uh, I'm gonna go with the Texans on this one plus four and a half. I think the Ravens are in a down spot this week. Texans plus four and a half for me. And uh, last one to finish it out, the Chicago Bears plus six and a half. Mm. Chicago Bears are almost catching a touchdown against the Rams on Sunday Night Football. Wow, they're on the road, but honestly, dude, the Bears fans travel well. I don't think the Rams are really getting the home support that they've had 
in, earlier in the year. They're starting to fumble a little bit. I think you see a ton of Chicago fans in there. I think it's a really, really good game on Sunday night. And I think it's a close game on Sunday night. I see the Rams winning 27-24. Bears okay. easily cover. Gotcha. I was going to say, you don't see a bounce back win after... Uh, they win, but, okay. but Bears easily cover. Gotcha. Six and a half. Love that. Love that one. So just to uh, recap here, Dow Palantonio is on two favorites, three underdogs. Mm-hmm. He's got the Cowboys minus three and a half, Bucks plus five and a half with me, Jets plus one and a half against me, Raiders minus ten and a half, Falcons plus five and a half. Mm-hmm. I have three, I'm the same shit, two favorites, three dogs, Bucks, Texans, Bears, all favorites, and then the Skins and the Bills on the, uh, I'm sorry, those are the favorites, the Bucks, Texans, and Bears are all underdogs. So that's what I'm looking at. That is your NFL heaters week 11. Actually, we should do a parlay really quick, Dell. Yeah. We've kind of talked about this in the weeks past. Let's just do this live on the show really quick. Okay. What do we like about our teams? Do you have them all written down? Yeah. All right. I love the Bucks this week. We're definitely taking the Bucks. Let's okay. make this a, a confident parlay. What do you want to put down? 25 each? Um. Yeah, 20 or 25. Sounds okay. good. Okay. Okay. So if we take the Bucks plus the points... Boom, five and a half. Okay. And then Cowboys minus three and a half. God, you love that, huh, Dow? You, yeah, but you said that wasn't available possibly. Oh, it's not because Stafford, Cause, it's not on the It's on the board yet. They don't know what's, what's going on with Stafford yet. Okay. But I love that one, dude. <clears throat> the Jets one and the Washington one were totally opposite. So, so uh, what do we, should we stay away? Mm-hmm. Well, let's see here. Let's pause that one okay. for a second. What else do you like of mine? Do you like the Falcons plus five and a half against the Panthers? God, I hate both of those, Dow. Redskins, I'm sorry, uh, Raiders and the Falcons. And the Raiders. Gosh, okay. I'm just not confident on them. Okay. Um, damn. Hmm. What do you, you know got? What? what do you got on yours? It doesn't matter what I'm confident on because we're going in this together. So I'm going Bears plus six and a half. Okay. Uh, let me see. Bears, Bears, Bears. Yeah, dude, let's let's throw this together. We're gonna make a huge parlay here. We're gonna make a lot of money. Let me uh I like a lot of money. Bears plus six and a half. Okay. Texans plus four. I like that Texans. Bills minus five and a half against Miami. Buffalo. I don't think Miami wants to win another game, so Buffalo. Oh damn, dude. Okay, yeah, Buffalo, and then we got four bets right now. Okay. So now we need, let's do your Raiders and your Jets. Gosh, I'm sorry, uh, Falcons. Yes. Falcons, and then the... Damn, I wish that Cowboys one was up there. Raiders. Okay. That's a six-team parlay, Dow. What does that look like? So Break one, it down. two... Let me see. So we each have three, is that right? I think so. All right, if we put 25 each on this. Okay. 16 parlay, 25 bucks each, 50 total. We'll win $23,000 or $2,300, 2320. Okay. If we can hit this. So we'll we'll be splitting 2320. Okay. Let's do it. I'll Venmo you. All right, so we got the Bucks plus five and a half, Bears plus six and a half, Houston plus four. Buffalo minus six and a half, Falcons plus four and a half, Raiders minus ten and a half. There it is. Locked. All right. That's gonna be fun. That's gonna be fun. We'll see what happens. We got a massive parlay going. We'll see if we can uh we'll see if we can take that down. And there are your heaters. NFL week eleven. Let's uh let's catch up on some chat stuff real quick before we move on. Seat Geek sells supreme seats, Gregory Ruiz. That's crazy. I didn't know that. Hmm. Supreme seats? Or like Supreme seats. Like, like the Supreme, the premier seats. Or like they come just coming up with a little slogan or, or something. Or they come with a nacho Supreme. Huh. What kind of seats? Fabio Perez. Is Cousins worth playing this weekend over Brady? Hell no, dude. Mm-mm. Hell no. Stay Mm-mm. away from Kirk Cousins. He's playing the Broncos. Second fewest fantasy points allowed by a defense this yeah. year to quarterbacks. Stay away. I agree with that. Play Brady all day. Marco, how dare you guys bet against the Saints? LOL, wow, you're going to regret it. <laughs> that's you, Dow. Yeah. That's not you guys. That's Dow betting against the Saints. I know. Oh, no, no, no. 
No, it's both of us, the Bucks. I bet against the Saints. We, we took the you Bucks. wanted the Saints, but you got off the Saints. Now you're with me. I did. So you are going to regret it. I Hopefully not. No, we're not going to regret it. Marco, trust me, we're taking this one. We're cashing in. You know what? Saints might win the game, guy, but we're getting plus five and a half. We're getting five and a half points. Dirty DJ, skins with Haskins, below not good. Agreed. Below not good. Couldn't agree more. Did you guys miss the shock drop on sneakers, jacked and juicy sequence? Of course not, bro. We got a ten and a half coming through. We in there. We in there like swimwear. We in there like chin hair. Brian Valencia. I got the Chargers over KC. They're training here in Colorado all week to get ready for the altitude in Mexico. Field is usually crappy there. Mahomes better be careful. Great points. I know. That's Mex- going to be interesting. Mexico, right? Yeah, with the bum ankle and the bum knee mm-hmm. running around on that field that, that was terrible last field. year. The yeah. game had to be canceled last year. Remember like, that? That field was like a poopy diaper. Yeah, it was it was canceled altogether. You already lost picking the Bucks. he said. No, if we get the five and a half, we win the money, Marco. Yeah. They don't have the Bucks don't have to win the game for us to win the money. Not at all. We just have to cover the five and a half. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Browns tonight. Uh let's hit on that. Let's close out the segment really quick with that. What do you think of what do you think of tonight's game? Um, I don't really Brown care Steelers. about it at all. I think what? Gonna, I think I'm gonna do a happy hour with Rob. I think I'm gonna have a blast watching that game. Dude, I, I, with what the Steelers just looked like the other night, they had a, a fun game to watch. Yeah, I think it looked entertaining. I had them plus four, cash the easy money. I don't think this is gonna be very entertaining. That's just my opinion. I don't know. I'm gonna do a happy hour with Kona or with Robin at Kona Grill. It's going to be a slaughter. I'm calling it. I'll put money on it. Marco, what are you talking about? Put money on what? You want to take the spread? You want to bet us? Yeah. You want you want to take the you want to take it's going to be a slaughter, he said. All right, all right. You want to take the uh Marco. Let's Hello. make a bet. Let's make a bet. You take the the Saints minus five and a half. I'll take them. I'll take the Bucks plus five and a half. How much you want to put down on it? You let me know. Make it light on yourself, guy. Okay? Make it light on yourself. All right. Uh I'm going to take the Browns tonight. I think the Browns are winning the game. Are you? Yeah. And did you know they're favorite? Are they? Isn't by, that crazy? By what? Two? Two or, or three. Th- wow. Isn't that weird? That is crazy. But now are they playing in Cleveland? or Pitts? They're playing in Cleveland. And if okay. you think about this, dude, the past five weeks, the Steelers have had four home games. And the one they went on the road was against the Chargers, which is essentially a home game. Mm-hmm. So the Steelers haven't played on the road in a minute, dude. Wow. I like the Browns tonight. I like the Browns on a sneaky, on the sneaky tip tonight. On the sneaky tip. Yeah. I like the Browns sneaky. Not, not, I'm not going to bet anyone. I'm not taking it. I'm not putting money on it. But <laughs> right. that's just, you know, some analysis for you. I like the Browns on a sneaker. All right, let's – um, that'll do it for NFL heaters. Let's move on from that. And, um, yeah, let's go into – let me pull up my rundown here. Let me pull up my rundown. Supreme Drop, sneakers and fashion. Mm-hmm. As always, brought to you by Rejuvenator. Yeah. You can save yourself 10% on Rejuvenator.com with the code underrated 10 all your sneaker care products. Use the code underrated ten. A lot of you guys have been telling me uh, you're using the using the products. I need to make sure we're getting our uh, affiliates going. I need to reach out to Rejuvenator. Rejuvenator, holler at me. Holler at your boy. I need to have some words with you. Uh, as we move into the next segment, Supreme dropped this morning. Yeah. So obviously the biggest uh, did you Supreme cop this morning? I did not Supreme cop this morning. The biggest thing on this drop was the Supreme Ramoa that we talked about. Uh, the little check-in bag, you know, with the bullet shots, aka spider webs, no doubt. Yes. And for that, spider, walking in the spider webs. Yeah. Nice. For that, for at nineteen hundred dollars, uh, nineteen ninety is what the retail cost was at on that. So Jeez. number one, it was limited. I think they only had between ten and fifteen of these units uh, at the stores. So just to let you know how limited these were, um, at that price, I didn't want it. I don't like it. I can't afford that. So I passed. But that was the biggest heater this week in Supreme. So that's the thing. Yeah, we talked about that last week or uh, the other day. We couldn't tell if it was spider webs on it or if it was like broken glass. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's made to be broken glass, but it looks like spider webs. Yeah, it just. Looks like a Halloween suitcase. Looks like it's been sitting in your attic yeah. for a while. Yeah, your attic. That's not good. That's funny. Yeah, so I don't like that at all. But uh, the rest of the, the, the drop was absolute trash until I actually showed somebody, uh, a.k.a. TTF, the Supreme Mountain Crew Neck. And Dude, all of a sudden... I like that. All of a sudden, this guy was a little interested in the Mountain Crew Neck. I like the Mountain Crew Neck and especially the Navy. The navy is my shit. Navy. I love the navy color with the red. You got the you got the nice mountain logo popping off. I'm a ma- I live in the mountains. The mm-hmm. mountains are in my backyard, dog. I get my fresh water from this stream that's shown on this on this thing right here. You got supreme in the red with the crest, yeah. and then it reads, "Thank you for the world so sweet. Thank you for the food we eat." Wow. 
Thank you for the birds that sing. Thank you, Supreme, for everything. That sounds like a prayer my dad just said. That is a wonderful a holiday cultish. season. That's Forever a, faithful right on the front, dog. That's our Thanksgiving prayer. <laughs> uh, you guys are looking like that uh, video earlier yeah. on Thanksgiving. Yeah, no Tip doubt. on the table. Yeah. This, I, I think this is tight. For some reason, I just like it in the Navy. I love that the whole thing is embroidered. I love that crest. Mm -hmm. I just... It's my steez. I'd rock it. I'd rock with it. You were showing me everything, telling me, you know, kind of going through it. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me see that. In the lavender, the, the, color, the color that sold out, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, my mom actually wore that in 1994 with the purple joggers to match. Uh, nice. So, yeah. Ruff, yeah. A little ruffles. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 That's Sweet, not dude. good. Not what good. else on there? Um, the only other thing that uh, went pretty quick that uh, that maybe had some sort of interest was the little eight ball joint. So Jalal, if you can go to that eight oh ball, my gosh. that eight ball button up reason. there. <laughs> oh, dude. That thing flew off the shelves, and uh, I wouldn't have wore that in 1994, and I definitely wouldn't wear it today. Tell my troubles to the eight ball on the bottom. Yeah. Tell my troubles to the eight Remember ball. Remember the eight ball? Yeah, of course. <laughs> what am I getting for Christmas? Yeah. Try again. Oh, and, man. And it's like, the outlook looks <laughs> bleak. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Those magic eight balls, dude. The outlook that? is looking bleak on copying this one. On that one? Yeah. <laughs> No shit. The, dude, who would want that, though? I don't know. I could see Fail Beast rocking that. Or could you really? Yeah, Fail Beast when he's out for a, uh, you know, for a nice little uh, bike ride, <laughs> you know, strapped in. He loves to wear Supreme on his bike ride. I could see him wearing that. I, I think don't you think you got to wear so. it unbuttoned with no shirt underneath. Oh, dude, you got to have, like, you got to have the hamburger meat coming chest out yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's the only way you could do this. No doubt. No doubt. But right. outside of that, I have nothing else to talk about with Supreme. I have really oh, been. Oh, not good. It's, it's really been a, a, a bad season, in my opinion. I just haven't really bought much. So the great news is the most un, uh, unemployed podcasts have been saving a lot of money. So I'm happy about that. Geiger, did you guys pick up the Shock Drop Bread 11s? I hit on them. So happy I'll bypass the pandemonium for them. We did, Dougie. We hit them on. Uh, we, Dalla got a pair at the beginning. I missed out. Jalal missed out. But. Mm -hmm. Dow got a pair. If you if you missed out today too, I mean they'll be they'll be everywhere. Oh, dude. You guys know with these Jordan Elevens, the past like four Christmas seasons, it's just been insane. I yeah. mean they're 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 everywhere. They're super easy to get. There's already rumors of the 2020 um, holiday shoe. Oh really? really? They're saying it's gonna be like a Space Jam colorway, but with silver accents. On an eleven? Yeah. Oh, but it's not an OG. So for that, I'm out. For that we, reason. We for that gamma. reason, I think we need a Gamma re uh, retro. Dude, yeah, what's up with yeah. the gammas? I like bro. gammas for sure. What's up with the gammas? I'll yeah. take that all day. I That'd agree. I agree. So that's all I have for Supreme, though. Dude, give me a symbol. Give me a crash right Got now him. for the homie Vitzer. Shout out to Vitzer. Multiple shouts out to Vitzer. He threw down $100 last week, last episode. Ridiculous. Dow, off the wall, above the backboard for TTF Alley Oop. Oh, my gosh. You want us oh. to get off the mic, uh, Vitzer? How See, are we supposed to even do that? I'm going I'm, to I'm come off hard, okay? So gonna, you better be ready. Easy. Whoa, pause. <laughs> I mean, geez. Come on, Dal. Tone it down a little bit. What do you think here, Jalal? I got to turn down the music so we don't get clipped for copyright. I, while I we're think we're going to, something's going to break, but. No, you got to throw it out. Here, you got to throw it off hard so I can catch I'll it. I'll throw in. it off hard. All right. All right. Let's pause. Let's. <laughs> all right. Oh, oh, that was oh. good, though. That was good, though. Vitzer, shouts out to you. Little entertainment here. That's <laughs> great job, Vitz. A fail great beast job. coming off hard with the Dal juice. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty five, Marco. You're on, Doug. My Venmo's at OMG. It's TTF. Just slide it through uh, Sunday night, Monday morning, whenever you like to square up. However you do it with your bookie, mm -hmm. we'll just do it that way. <laughs> <laughs> so. 25. All right, Marco, you're in. The gunshot confirms. We have 25. You have the Saints minus five and a half. That means they need to win the game by six or more. Six or more points they need to win the game. I got the Bucks plus five and a half. Anything under that, you lose. How did I say five? He's Now he said I said five. Did I say five? Five what? Five points. No. I thought we had it at five and a we half. We have it on the heater at five and a half. I... You give me the half, Marco. You said they're going to be blowing him out. You just said it's going to be a bloodbath or whatever you said. Yeah, message me your info. Yeah. Give me the five and a half, damn it. It's going to be a bloodbath for crying out loud. Yeah, check the tape. It's five and a half. We said it on heat. All right, he said he got it. All right. <laughs> we are arguing with the chat. Oh, <laughs> check, check this out. T-Mobile says, I told it a car listening to Spiderwebs with Dan Belton in the back seat. <laughs> oh, no shit. <laughs> so, did you, so did you pick up the Supreme case? That's crazy, dude. Yeah, that's a crazy, crazy story. Are you obviously you're okay, but 
The car's not. What the hell? Total the car? What kind of car was it, guy? Okay, five and a half. Cool. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Marco. T-Mobile. Was it a Hyundai? A Hyundai. A Hyundai? Um, all right, let's move on. Supreme drop. Nothing. No. No good. We got some stuff, though. Um, yeah. Let me see what we... I didn't know what you wanted to do first, so I didn't put it in the rundown that way. All right, so uh, I guess we'll just take a quick look at this. Uh, we already know kind of what the Travis Scott upside down Nike Air look like. Jalal actually got his uh, finally in, and he's got the yellow. Hoodie. Oh, nice. Okay. So I guess we'll undead stock it so he can't make any money. Maybe we won't <laughs> take. Maybe we won't take it out of its clear package. How about that? I would take it out. All but right. I think I think I'm gonna let that go because. It was pretty thin. Because it's not. Oh, yeah. If it's the same as yours. Or we we'll can see. actually we can actually see if the quality matches mine. Maybe maybe mine was just jacked up. I don't know. Mm. Let's check it out. Here, you want to open it? Oh yeah, I mean, this you is Jalal. You, got it. you, you got, got, it. got it, Dow. All right. That's yeah, an XL. It's an XL. Okay. Is Here, it, is double XL. Big man style. Big mine man. Was, mine was a large. I hope the quality is better. That would be so fire. If yours was just a pooper quality, <laughs> your stitching was all off because it's just all off. All right. You want to put a bet on it? I bet you the quality is the same no, shit quality. No, no, Five? I'm, no? No, no. Marco, no. you want to bet? I, got, I don't we got, got much time. faith in Travis. We ain't to... got time. We got to hustle this long. We're running out of time for the show. Look at that. It looks the exact same. Yeah, the exact same. The exact cuffs, same thin. The cuffs still have that V in it that is not good. The thin. Yep. Still really thin. Would you? So are you selling this purely off the quality, Joel? You just don't want it because of that? Yeah. You won't wear it enough? I, it, I mean, I'll probably wear it, but just for the 95, like, I don't know. Yeah. It's too thin. The back is the back is fire. The I, back could, is I would really have to do a layering piece. If you were yeah, going to try to wear it as a real, the, yep. Yeah, no. Out here in the CO, yeah, it's not like the champion one you have on where it's, like, good good quality. Here, yeah. I'll let you check it out. Heavy. Yeah, we looked at it. Yeah, it's thin, man. It's uh, it's Thin McGee over there. But it's nice and big. And the Nike Air doesn't glow like mine, Print so that's nice. not tight. Oh yeah, the Nike Air glows on yours. I forgot yeah. about that. That's it. That is a uh, kind of a that cool is a thing. miss out. Yeah, I like I like the They'll way the said the summer sweater. There, though. <laughs> yeah, the design is summer sick. Sweater. Yeah, it that is. backside is really we'll nice. It's not a winter do, joint, but I it's like a fall my, spring. Uh, we get enough fall spring weather around here where you can I have rock my it. New Castles, the SBs. Oh, oh, that, that would be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cactus Jack branding though. I don't know. Right? Huh? Still dope. But yeah, quality. I, not dope for ninety five. That's the biggest issue, right? Not that yeah. dope for ninety five. Yeah, just the, I, I like the thick, thick hoodies for sure. Not not mm-hmm. enough for ninety five dollars. Uh, forty five, fifty five dollars. Hell yeah, all day. Oh, oh yeah, all day for sure. Ninety five. It's too much. All right, sticking with Travis Scott. Guess what? I finally got in. I got the highest oh, in the room. Nice hey. tie dyed T shirt, man. Finally came so, through. So let's take this is a medium because I Travis Scott T shirts run a little bit big in my opinion. I don't know if everybody else feels that way, but uh, I went ahead and got a medium instead of a large. And uh, let's see what this feels like here. Look at this. Open it up on the cast. Oh, looks a little looks a little tight. It does look a little tight. Looks a little say? tight in my tight T. In my tight T. Oh, it might be all oh, right. I think it'll be all right, yeah. It might be an IT. Looks like a I tight T, but it's an IT. Fat guy in a little T. Yeah, I don't have that one anymore. Damn it. No? I cut it out. What do you think about the back here? Hold on. Let me, let me get this thing up here, here so I can talk to you here. Let's have some words here. The back is sick. Cool art. Think about that. I think that looks pretty tight. Yeah, I think it looks now, good. Now, what's not tight is the shirt quality. This is a basic bitch jerseys, like, crappy t-shirt. Oh, Feel really? the quality of that. Uh, it almost feels itchy to me. Oh, yeah, dude, it on. yeah. You know I what I mean? You, yeah, But, dude, it's still, like, it looks super thin, though. Yeah, it, it the does. the bleach or the tie-dye that does that? Yeah, you can almost kind of I don't know how they uh, see through the light. Yeah, you can almost see through the light. Yeah. But pretty pretty basic on the front, just the Cactus Jack logo. Very easy. And then the back print. It feels be, a little heavy on this that This might back. be one of the greatest licks in merch history. Dude. Travis Scott. What did you pay for that? Uh, I think this was 60 Wow. I wonder what they what Crazy, they walked away with on, on this drop, the highest oh, in the room. Shit. This is Crazy. all off one single. And this all it, like an album. All right. And people go crazy Jeez. just off the merch and just because it's the merch. Not because of the quality of the merch, not because... Well, I guess you could say some of the design shit is pretty dope. You can say the designs are cool. It's just the quality's bad. Right. Because the design on that, the Cactus Jack on the back with the Jordan with the spikes on him, that's pretty sick. Mm-hmm. The T is dope. So, yeah. that's yeah. They're cutting costs over there at uh, Cactus Jack mm-hmm. yeah. LLC. Yeah. F- <laughs> Failby says Finesse Jack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Finestus Jack. Finestus Jack. <laughs> nice one, Failby. Oh, Con Lee. $2 for the French. Hit him with the symbol, bro. Nice. Con Lee. 
Uh, dude, I got this jacket. Shit. Ask Black Prez. Black Prez has got the same jacket. We got yes. it. We were both in New York City together, and we bought them in New York. And I don't remember where the hell we got them. We went to so many stores. Hmm. I have no idea where. It I got looks this like jacket. a J Crew. Looks like J Crew to me. Yeah, New this York. J Crew. New York, 2010, 12? Damn. something like that. Yeah, dude. Jalal wasn't here. even. Jalal wasn't even a thought. Negative then. four. Negative four. <laughs> Jalal, negative four. Hey, Adidas finally uh, delivered my uh, my seven hundreds. Let me see. You ever seen the Wave Runners? Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you've, we've seen them in person. Yeah. But we've never worn them. No, never gotcha. put them on. Well, I got them. So, size 10 and a half. Let me see them. I'll just let me just take a look. It's in a book. I, uh, Conley said the cool gray uh, Jordan 11s need a retro. I totally agree with that. Love the cool grays. I have the cool gray lows. They're incredible. Would love the highs to release, though. There what you do you go. Th- what do you think of the Wavy Runners? Some Wave Runners. Man. They just look a little fat. <laughs> yeah, I doubt. I would take these back to the Adidas store. You think? Go down to the Rock guy. Get give them, three, give them some heat over there. Give, you get your three hund back. I mean, doubt what? <laughs> I'm gonna check these out after. Are you kidding? You check them out now because I'm done. Might. I'm absolutely done. <laughs> so just check them. Oh, you're checking them. Detail them after the cast. You'll you give, you give me, give me for retail. I can't pay three hundred for that. Yeah, for sure. I, I haven't even tried them. I, I don't even know if they'll fit me. I think they will. I think you have to go a, a half size up at least, you know, on the 700s. But, uh, yeah, man, it's, I'll you beat, know. I'll beat that shoe up. Damn. Wow. Dude. Yeah, that's not, I'm not about that shoe. T- uh, T-Mobile, 20 years ago was the car crash. 88th Plymouth Laser. <laughs> 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 We're both okay, LOL. Nice. Congrats, guy. Jesus. What do you fools think of the latest uh, off-white ladies shoe? Sold out on U.S. sneakers, but sitting in Australia. I heard it took a while to sell out for a little bit today, yeah. but um, I nah, Dude, I can't go. That shoe that. is so awful. That's crazy. all of those colorways. Those are the worst. The midsole is atrocious. That like weird windbreaker. Are thin they just material. getting crazy now? Like thinking if they put off white on it, we could sell anything. I think it's gross, dude. That shoe, like uh, Bait did first come first serve down here. Sneakers app, I, dude. I didn't even give that thing a second look, man. That's awful, awful, awful. Vitzer is Travis Scott the only one that does the upside down Nike symbol? That's the most dad looking thing I've ever seen. Oh, this is the most dad looking thing. Uh, the off white, yeah. Other than uh, the upside down Nike. Other than like Ted, when Teddy was had his merch, <laughs> right? But yeah, I haven't seen it on anything else. Not like that. Mm-mm. Not like Nike Air and then the logo upside right. down. Yeah, you'll a, see the check like uh, you know on some of the little bronze. I think had a model or two, and then the honest, uh, the honest's. Vitzer, you could pull these off. It's the most dad looking thing I've seen. I better order some. He said. Yeah, these are <laughs> as you're coaching soccer dog. There's not a better shoe. Yeah, dude, can take a look at those, Jalal. See what's Dadisms. going on. Dadisms. See what's going on there. Those things are. Bad, bro. Bad. <laughs> These are bad, but those are so bad, dude. So bad. bad. They're not. They're not bad. Let me. Um, Jalal says they're so bad that they're not that bad. Yeah, I don't like that shoe, fail beast. Uh, the off white one. Yeah. Do you it's guys really have anything? Just the color, like the color, saves it because the like the shape and the mm-hmm. I don't know, even the material just looks. It's just so chunky. <laughs> chunky monkey. It is a chunky. But I just love the color. You guys good on uh, the sneaker stuff? We can go into, uh, we hit the YouTube comments really quick and then the rated yeah. news. Yeah. All right, we're kind of running up against it. There wasn't a ton, not a crazy amount for sneakers today. More merch stuff. But the new vlog with the What the Fours will be dropping, so make sure you're on the lookout for that. Now, starting off the YouTube comments this week, Landon, thanks for the sympathy on the DraftKings loss, TTF. LOL, what made it even worse is that McCaffrey, or I had McCaffrey, and he got stopped at the half-yard line at the end of the game. Great cast, and congrats on the new place. <laughs> I know, dude. I, I, I didn't. Ha- oh no, that's mine. That's mine this time. Sorry. Um, I had McCaffrey in a couple DraftKings leagues, and he just for the ten thousand five hundred dollars salary cap price, he did not perform. Can't do it. Jay Rio, Affirmation was their second album. The intro song used "I Want You" is from their self-titled album in '97. Mm. Dow. My bad. Jesus. Get your Sav Garden knowledge up, right? <laughs> Thanks, Jay Rio, for setting us straight. Mm-hmm. Taylor Jordan, fire cast, my dude. Con- my dudes, congrats on the new building. Hard work pays off. Keep pushing. <laughs> Flex emoji. Appreciate it, dude. I'm so excited to get those keys and get in that place, start getting it set up the way we want. Status Seragraph. Dal is right. The Element React Resole is uh, <laughs> React Soul is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorites as I stand all day at work. 
Dow, if you want a great 55, check out the size exclusive that came out. It's got a ripstop grip material, upper, and rope laces. It was not hyped on. Re- it was not a hyped release, so I bet you can get them off StockX for a great price. Hmm. There you go, Dow. Check out the size exclusive Element 55s. Have what to did, check me, those out. Let me. Uh, do you have them pulled up? I what do. do they look like? Pulling them now. There you go. Oh, interesting. Kind of different, right? Yeah, like a little grid on there. Like a pinstripe grid. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Kind of interesting. They're not awful. Appreciate it, Sarah Graf. Dang, dude, every time I read that uh, status Sarah Graf, you know what pops in my head? What's that? Look at this photograph. <laughs> it's not even photograph. I don't know why. I'm going to get that as his soundbite. Some Nickelback, yeah. Every time he comments, I'm going to just play that little drop. He's going to be the first listener to have a drop <laughs> soundbite. I could be in the new Patreon series. Oh, sure you get a custom. Sound there you go. Bite. Jalal, that's why you're here. That's why you're part of the show, man. You get your own drop. Custom sound. There you go. Yeah, dude. New patron. I like it. I like it. Luxic. How's it going down, fools? Congrats on moving forward with the live cast. I'm already on my drive home around that time, so I'll just catch up on the Patreon side. Jalal, welcome to the cast. Thanks, Great. man. Please, Jalal. Great Monday show. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> I know he's got a long comment, so I was like, let me just get the I thing know, in yeah, right he now. Does. Dang, t- I just scrolled down. I just clicked read more, and the thing opened up like a book. Yep. <laughs> Great, It was like a pop-up book. Great Monday show. I'll start by apologizing to you guys. Two months ago, you did this chicken sandwich taste test and claimed that Popeye's sandwich was the winner. I thought you guys were crazy. What in the hell does Colorado know about chicken sandwiches? I had to have been there, or I had been there for the chicken strips before, but was never a fan. Finally got my hands on one of the spicy chicken sandwiches. Thought it was fair to get the spicy one since I always get the spicy at Chick-fil-A. And you guys were right, fellas. The chicken was tender. The pickle was there for every bite. It actually had me wanting a second. Wow. Glad I wasn't on an edible eating that thing. (laughs) Speaking on that, that's more of a full body. uh, Speaking on that, edibles, more of a full body high. Very different than smoking a joint. No way to judge when it's going to kick in. Probably the main reason I stay away. I would probably freak out if I was on a plane and there was some sort of turbulence. Stick a knife in me. Game over. Mm. So, yeah, that's that's referring to the Dion Waiters edible situation of him getting freaked out and having the panic attack on the plane. I picked up the Yeezy Desert Boots in our in the oil colorway, going two full sizes up. Sounds crazy, though. I think in the style that gives it an illusion that you need a bigger size. I also have the black 500s, and in that shoe, which is what the boot is, the boot basically is. My foot slides forward, making my toe hit the front of the shoe, and I get the same effect with the boot. They're very tight when you first get them, but after they break in, they're a nice boot for fall and winter. Hmm. So what do we think, guys? You have to go a, a size and a half? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that that two sizes was for everybody. It it would have been okay for me because even the size and a half, I, I feel like I could use even after a you breaking them room, in. But I got wide feet, so I don't. Know. Uh, I don't know. I've worn them like that's what maybe he's three, saying. Four times. He's saying after they break so in, they they're there might yeah, be so a little bit of yeah, maybe so give them. Let's see how you feel in the after the winter. Size and a half. Drake is probably my favorite artist. I've seen him every time he comes to NY or New Jersey. He puts on a great show. Hit after hit after hit. For him to get booed is just crazy. I'm digging the new Hollywood Dow Versace glasses. <laughs> Glossy shattered backboards. What's next, bro? You done with the low-key neutral look? Do it big or go home. I get it. Well, yeah. that's all for me. Have a great weekend, fellas. <laughs> Holy shit, Luxic. Is there somebody that's listening to the damn show? My goodness, dude. Detailed comment. He's made in there. sense. Giving you a lot of shots, bro. Great job, Luxic. Great comment, man. Thanks for coming through and touching on everything. Charlie Gray, Savage Garden, love the throwback vibes. Used to love that song back in the day. Appreciate you, Charlie. And lastly, Soul Max 23. Those are more like top four what does. Totally agreed. I said that in the review. Me and Dal said that. Uh, They're more like top four than what the. No doubt. No doubt. Couldn't agree more. All right, let's move into um, some underrated news, Dal. Yeah, you bet. Hit me with that. So, uh, it was announced just a few, uh, just a while back, actually, but the Motorola Razor 2019, dude. Um, so, the Razor is back, but they made a new 2019 version of it, dude. So, this draws inspiration from Whoa. the classic Razor from the 2000s. And the reason it does, dude, this is a foldable smartphone. 
Oh, Look at that thing, dude. Wow, dude. How cool is that? That is crazy. But where's the four cameras on it? Play that video again, Jalal. Run that back one time. I tuned in late. I just caught the cast. It's the old. Old? Razor. Sick. Ah, oh, wow. Stripping to the new? Interesting. And you know what else is interesting? This that? is This is ex- exclusive to Verizon. It's got to be. Do you guys, it just says only at Verizon. Verizon does all the Motorola. Do you guys remember what the original Razor was exclusive to? T-Mobile. No. Damn it. That was the pink Razor. Ah. The OG Razor. The OG Motorola Razor. Where where could you only get it at? Is it AT&T? AT&T. And mother and T. Was it? AT&T. And then they had the iPhone exclusive in uh-huh. 08? Uh, 07? 07. 07. 07. 07. Yeah, dude. They were the first ones to really start doing that exclusivity when oh. it came to phones. Other than... The sidekick, which is what T-Mobile did, and that was kind of All their right. own, yeah, yeah, you know, deal. But yeah, dude, it was um, the Motorola Razor. That's interesting. Yeah, dude, really cool. When did that drop? Uh, so it is currently available for order, but it sounds like U.S. will start shipping uh, starting January of 2020. So hmm. it sounds like you can order it, you can be on the pre-orders, all this good stuff, but it's not gonna it's not gonna ship until January of 2020, and then expected to launch in India and other markets very very soon. Motorola has also begun accepting registrations for the foldable phone on its uh, India website. So check out some of these specs. So the Razer comes with a 6.2 inch P O L E D. So I don't know what that is. Uh, I don't know what that P stands the, the for. Poled. The, the Poled. Poled. Right? Maybe that's maybe because the Poled uh, folds, you know. I don't know. Something. The Poled and f- that's that's the new. This is no. You know how they have OLED screens? Yeah. This is Foled. Oh, yes. Yeah. The folding LED. Yeah. Yes, I got yeah. it. Got there it. Go. So it's got uh, <laughs> fully opened. It has a 21. Uh, uh, dot nine aspect ratio, uh, ratio, and then, dude, the pixel resolution is is incredible. Obviously, with the OLED, but it is the two point seven touch screen, um, just like the Samsung Galaxy Fold. So uh, again, the screen, the pixel, very comparable to the Galaxy Fold that a lot of us still haven't seen because they re- redid it. Did right? You know that? Yes, yeah. yes, they recalled it because they had some major flaws on that. So um, I would say, so the cover screen allows users to play music, take selfies, and respond to notifications without it actually being open. So it's a touch screen, have, that little... Yeah, that little front front display. Chris J in the chat says there's only one camera because it flips, and that's the front camera. Gotcha. Also $1,500, $1,499. Yes, sir. Tag. That is the retail. I was just getting into that. Yeah. Wow. So, so yeah, man, you better have your pocketbook right, but priced at $1,499, which is an ungodly amount of money. Um yeah, for sure. Know. So, but again, uh, so the Motorola, uh, so the Motor Razor offers a 16 megapixel rear shooter, um, and then the front is just the five megapixel selfie camera um, on the inside. Then again, the dual LED flash um, software. It just runs on the Android Pie out of the box. So again, I'm not very clued into what they're doing with the Android updates because man, I haven't used one right, since, no doubt. since Vietnam. No doubt. Uh, typical Bluetooth, uh, USB Type C charging, the splash uh, proof. Uh, resistant nano coating, which is pretty cool. Um, and then the thick base of the phone also houses a fingerprint sensor. So mm. even with all this older technology with the flipping and all that, and you still have all your modern twists on it, which is really neat. But man, how are they going to compete at $1,400, $1,500? Oh, shit. Like, I just don't... One camera on the device? It's, it's a nostalgic factor. Only I don't think it's powerful enough. I, just... I don't think it's... I just don't think they it can. Doesn't seem like a full fledged smartphone. And then as thin yeah, as it. I was it, confused even uh, looking at the the video. It didn't look like it was a full smartphone. Like what? I thought yeah. it was just like a nostalgia phone. Or no, but it's Android. He said. Yeah, it's Android. Yeah. Android Pie out of it. So, so and then the full touchscreen when it's fully out is all touchscreen. I'm sure it'll be fast. I'm sure it'll be quick. But as thin as it is, because of the foldable aspects to it, dude, the battery life can't be worth a shit. Yeah. On that thing. I think to say, everyone's kind of on the same boat. Even with Chris here, I love the concept, but just don't know how it'll hold up long term. Right. I think it's just too fragile. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the, everyone's kind of, if it's not better than this, what are we doing? You know what I mean? Right. Like, what are we talking about? Yeah. Because uh, I'm not giving up this just to feel like yeah. I'm in 06. Plus, I'd hate to go back to Android. I just can't do it, man. My whole lifestyle is Apple-based right yeah. now. My ecosystem. For sure. So, Yeah. That's uh, that's the latest and greatest, man. So uh, welcome back, Motor Razor. I think I'll wait till the Ami James version of that. You think they'll make the an Ami, Ami James? James? Oh my gosh, shut up! You don't Even think the do, Ami James? You don't think they'll do the tattooed dragon no. on these? No. Come on, Even man. Ami James. Uh, Is this going to be five G compatible? Oof, I don't know. I didn't see. I have no idea. Let me wrap this up, Renzo. Those off whites are as good as Kanye clogs. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. 
Vitz or Mandy's telling me no. That's how you know they're straight fire. Talking about the Wave Runners. <laughs> Popeye, greater than Chick-fil-A. Love my Wave Runners. A lot of people do, man. A lot of people do like the mm -hmm. Wave Runners. Agreed. Battery too small as well. Yep. I think we're all on the same boat with that one, man. Um, cool, guys. Anything else before we uh, close out the show today? No. Get let's, in the building tomorrow, dude. Let, let, let's hope we can uh, operate out of the building come on Monday's cast. So exactly. You live fools, make sure you're tuned in because who knows what the hell you're going to get. Who knows what you're going to get on the cast live on Monday. Hopefully we have the building. Also, man, make sure you tune in the vlogs because we'll, be, uh, we'll have the vlogs all going and everything there to give you guys behind the scenes. As always, thank you guys for tuning in, man. Thank you for supporting everything we do. We love the shit out of y'all, and we'll see you fools Thursday. Hit that thumbs up real quick. Hit that thumbs up real quick.